stands out like no other. Phone calls, tweets, celebrity guests, Sam's friends that are good on the air. As a taste of the future starts now. This is Sam Roberts. The only place that you're going to find amazing stuff like this all the time, Opie Radio. What a show yours truly, Sam Roberts, has planned for you today. Let me tell you, DJ Who Kid is expected in at any moment, but we all know DJ Who Kid, uh, uh, he lives by no man's schedule. And by no man, I mean the white man's schedule. DJ Who yeah. Kid does not abide by the rules of tradition and manners. Uh, but DJ Who Kid will be here, I think, at some point. We have... Our pal Adrian, who produces the show or interns for the, I don't know, he's here. He gets paid to be here. Uh, he's on his way to pick up Bobby Lee right now. So Bob, wow. Yeah. So Bobby Lee is scheduled to be here. Uh, also definitely will be here in a little while. The guy who directed uh, the Banksy documentary that's on HBO on Monday. Yeah. He's going to be here. 
So a huge show, and that voice that you hear with me on the Sam Roberts Show in studio right Pleasantly now. Pleasantly agreeing with you. Is, is Dan Soder, our ray of sunshine. Welcome, Dan. Sam, good to be here. Is it, though? I'm Dan furious. and I have a be. I'll tell you this. I'm furious at you. Uh, it's a good thing you're furious with me, because... As I was coming up here, you saw me. I was like scrambling like 30 seconds before the show starts yeah. just to make sure I have all my shit in front of me. Yeah. The uh, CD burner failed at the last minute, and I went to the printer, and it doesn't work. And rolling through a shitty wrestling move on right. you. Right, and Roland Wallace. tried to get me in some kind of uh, half Nelson. The rolling ch half chicken wing. Right. So, so we're dealing uh, – I got a leg and a brace right now. We'll just put it that way, you know? I, um, sh I shouldn't be here today. No. But because of your actions, because of wow. your dirty deeds, Dan Soder's... I got brought in on a chilly Friday afternoon. <laughs> it is chilly. I should be at home uh -huh. enjoying something that I don't have. True. Because of the Sam Roberts. If you want to be a part of the show, call up now. 866-969-1969. 866-WOW1WOW. And I'm going to tell you what happened. So everybody knows I have a good relationship with a couple of companies, a great relationship. Well, I've, with a few companies. Sirius but XM if, thinks I'm the bee's knees. But if people were to, if you were to say which company does Sam have a great relationship with right. in a family feud style questionnaire, yes. the number one would, response would be an overwhelming WWE. Is WWE on the board? Bing! With 77%. See, that's the one question. The woman wouldn't be like, uh, <laughs> yeah, they would be like, oh, Sam Roberts likes wrestling. Yeah, I have a great relationship with WWE, and I have a great relationship with the company that makes WWE games. That's a twofer. 2K games. Uh, and you know Dan Soder uh, has been on my after show multiple times, and most of the time we end up into a lengthy conversation about wrestling video games. It always happens. Well, I told him, I was like, Dan, don't worry. <laughs> this new WWE game, 2K15, is coming out. I don't play many video games. I'm very bad at video games. Very bad. Oh, yeah, you. I remember when you got a PS4, you texted me you were practicing how to punt. Yeah, I gave up on it. Which is one of the most infuriating things from a Madden fan. You're like, oh yeah, you're just punting. I Sam? gave up on it. I couldn't get the I could not get the punting down right, so I gave up on it. I said some things. You I'm, really do. You know what? You have a punter's personality. Right. You're really like, hey, it's third and long. Here comes. A, I hope they fail so I can come in and really put this down the <laughs> yeah. field. Now, yeah. is there a position in the game where you just play as the punter? <laughs> yeah. Because that's the skill that I've mastered. EA should put out a game called Punter, and you just play occasionally. <laughs> right. And only when everyone's super upset. Can I just play as special teams? <laughs> yeah. Like, can I just be that guy? Special team Sam Roberts. Well, well, well. Oh. Are you coming in or are you just being secretive? I'm just going to say hi for a second. Hey, Ron. I, you know, I was just listening to you guys down the hall, and you're just kicking ass. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, you sounded great. Well, I was just thinking that it's about time you did some work around here in terms of radio shows. I'd like to do a little more, yeah. but I uh, just spent an hour with Dice, and it was just really incredible. Was wow. Dice good? He, he was unbelievable, dude. It was great. Oh, good. He went to, to really? everything. There's... Um, Dice talking about him and Sam for a long time. Him and Sa him <laughs> Kinnison, Sam, not Kinnison. Roberts. Now you, I forget. No, I know. Oh, if oh. he was talking about that, yeah. I would. I I'd forget like, that you lose his goddamn mind. <laughs> Why? I forget. I see. I'm a, I'm from the generation where we just say Sam. Yeah, right. I leave it at that. And you know what's weird? This new young generation is starting to get there too. But they're talking about yours truly. Uh, unfortunately, well, somebody came to me the other day and they said, "Do you think?" That Sam is the Jay Z of Sirius, and I said no, definitely not. Oh, uh, I go Jay Z is really big and successful, and everybody likes okay, him. The, I was just that's it. That's, was, that's the end of the. You would enjoy this. I was just comparing Sam Roberts to a punter, basically saying like that's that. yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Special team Sam Roberts. That I could just jump in when needed. You mean and have no, a, like, a, a very when everyone's bummed out, right? you come in to do your job. <laughs> you punt. Yeah. You know what I mean? You try to get. Yeah. I was out of the depression. I'm, I'm good for and, the extra. I'm good for the extra point. And that's no, you're not even, nothing. You're not even no. the place kicker. No. You, you're not even, you don't know what a punter does, do you? Just punting. Yeah. I don't even get to be the all-around kick guy. No. There's no such thing as the all-around kick guy. <laughs> I thought a, maybe. That doesn't exist. I could break a mold or. No, no you just don't I, know sports so besides wrestling. Occasionally they have a kicker. All you yeah. said, punt. you just said no about the Jay-Z thing and that was it? Like yeah, there's I just no, said no. Oh. Not actually, well, I, he's more like. A child said it to me. I mean, like. Uh, <laughs> 
uh, a four-year-old. Oh. But seriously, I like what you're doing here. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like what you're doing, you know. Uh, Opie's coattails. You know what I mean? That's There's... not what I mean. We're trying to get beyond. That's I why saw... it's at three. I thought that. Yeah, it's at three because Opie's coattails. That was that's the <laughs> ten thirty show. You look like you were just skiing off the back of them and just <laughs> waving to people. Still good back yeah. here, buddy. <laughs> like, Still watch out! There's a ramp. <laughs> a little bit of a wake. Yeah. No, this is this is, is the coattails have moved down by three. By the way, I hope they cleared everything out before you came in here because I was doing my show. And then I forgot I had dice, mm -hmm. and then I left my coat and stuff down here. So I hope that wasn't a problem for you. Cause it's never. Are you kidding me? No, but I like I like to be one of those co-workers who are like, it's not like that asshole. Yeah. You, know I mean, mean? you clean up your space. Yeah. You yeah. know what? I, Keep a nice cubby hole. You know, I always like to say this. You can see about someone's sobriety by the looks of their apartment. <laughs> and I just believe in that. Yeah. You know? I, but I don't mind there being an essence of Bennington in this studio when I enter. <laughs> You're talking about my jizz now, right? Yeah. I okay, mind. I'll leave a puddle of that behind for you. The buttons get a little sticky. I talked to Fez. He said he was having some pen trouble today. He had oh. ink stains all over his pants and shirt. Something exploded in his pants, <laughs> and it was an ink, and then he inked it up to cover up. It was he a cover up. He yeah. did, didn't he? just took a Sharpie and yeah. said. It's, yeah, it's like one of the commit a I'll crime just, to I'll take the heat off think. another crime. Yeah. yeah. Hold on. Is Fez in here just a second ago? <laughs> that was a pretty damn good Fez. Yeah. That was me, Ron. Mm. The punter. <laughs> <laughs> nailed it. Came in and nailed it. Well. So is it tough, though? I mean, because we were talking about the Ron White unmask when Ron was on Opie's show on Thursday. Mm. Ron, like, broke down on, on your show. Did Dice break down? I don't want to say. Okay. Oh, Smart man. God. That makes you know me does? believe it might have. It might have. That's that's why he's Ron Beddington, because he it's a might have. Yeah. What? I it's don't a know. might have. You, you leave it where the audience is going to go, did he? You know? Yeah. Did he? But the fact that you came off of the epic Ron White thing, happy about the dice thing, is pretty incredible. No, I, uh, well, look, let me tell you, I did the Farley Brothers this week, uh, Ron White. Dice. It's just you know. It's How very, much prep time do you put into the un unmasks? I put seventy hours into each unmask. That's incredible. Wow. That you can do this number it's, of these. That from I have you know. It's like when NASA goes to the moon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You you work it. You work it, and then you have a plan for if the you know one if suddenly the boosters aren't going off. You what, have that. Yeah. What is your recuperation process like after an unmasked? You're clearly, obviously, physically, mentally, emotionally drained. Like an astronaut. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I found this, and I don't know if anyone agrees with this. Yeah. An eight ball Coke, and you just <laughs> sit <laughs> there, and then I have my scotch with me. Okay. And then I just, I'm snorting, I'm drinking, I'm snorting, and then I look at the mirror, and I go, where did I go wrong? Yeah. <laughs> what happened? And then that becomes your yeah. own unmask. What happened to my own? Yeah, I unmask myself all the time. <laughs> you unmask yourself yeah. after I'm doing a I'm doing a one-man show called What Happened to My Dreams. And, um, <laughs> I it's really exciting. I cannot wait to see it. You know what? I, I, I only came in here to get my coat and uh -huh. stuff, and everybody was like, listening, you guys are enjoying it, and now they're hearing me, I think, on like my fourth or fifth show today. But you still got, you still got the juice somehow. Yeah, but I don't know if all the Jews like it. I sometimes <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes think of you as the Al Roker of radio. Ooh. This is the Bennington song. I right was going to say to me, and this is just kind of a new age take on that. <laughs> okay, yeah. I like that. I like to think of him as the Michael Strahan of this, where he's just now. On is everything. he a punter? <laughs> yeah. Michael that's Strahan. That's sad. No, no. Well, I was talking about him not knowing anything yeah. about sports <laughs> <Yes>. outside <laughs> the squared circle. Yeah, Sam the Unsun. <laughs> but I mean, I like the whole. I think if well, anybody, the asshole. No, is that what you not mean? the when you whole? Say I like the whole W H. Yeah, uh, the idea that you could be the guy to get that Guinness World Record for radio. Did you see Al Roker getting his world I, record for uh, weather? You know, I don't understand <laughs> what your connection and love for Al. I'm not He's in the man. Yeah, uh, no, no, I have, <laughs> I have a total hate for him. As a matter of fact, here's what happened. Right when we started serious, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because uh, they'd been at XM for a while. They said, uh, you could have Al Roker on the show. And I go, I don't want Al Roker on the show. And they go, could you, you know, we could do Al Roker. And I said, oh, I'll know. Um, I'll put him on with Jim Norton because Jim Norton wrote something about him. This is a book, and that'll be fun. So I called Jimmy, and Al was apparently furious and angry. 
And then Sirius said, that's it. We'll never get you another guest. And the, the they were person, mad at you? The person from the booking department. Yeah, because they felt like, and I go like this, guess what? I don't want another fucking guest ever. Oh. Don't even bring up a guest named him. Because if in this business, if they think you want something, they yeah. will kill you for it. Yeah. So I go, I never want any more guests. Don't ever even bother me with guests. <laughs> yeah. And then like two weeks later, like, please. I want you to have some guests. I don't want to guess. <laughs> Take all the guests. Everyone that comes in here yeah. has to stop by right, first. Right. You're right, though. The minute you started asking for a guest, they, no, no, no. We don't, no. We don't give him you guests You can't anymore. have guests. We want to do the exact opposite of what people want. And it's, but, it's hilarious that you took the time to think about setting it up where it would be maybe a possible conflict on air, maybe something very funny. Well, you yeah. should yeah. some radio work, yeah. Boo yeah. to that. <laughs> yeah. And I always remember that day because we called Jim on the phone. And he was like, what? Hello? <laughs> what? <laughs> Hello? Can you hear? You know, nothing was happened. He war, yeah, he was war yeah. correspondent, Jim yeah. Norton. Yeah, nothing happened at all. But I guess Al or his people got their feelings hurt. And, you know, they tried to bring it back my way. And I'm just like, just don't ever bring oh. anybody in here again. Right. I only brought it up because he did the 34-hour weather cast. I didn't know there were demons. Everybody in this, you know, you never know. Oh, he could be the greatest guy in the world. Right. Me and Al Roker will never be friends. Wow. What? The That's fuck? it. That's blowing your mind, isn't it? Sam? That's crazy. That's kind of your thing. Part. I would fucking hang out with the guys from ISIS. What? All right. That's well. First off, that's way too hard to book. The booking, <laughs> the booking department would have to break a no, lot of rules. I'll go to them. Oh, I'm wow. going through the desert. An unmasked and, ISIS? And then they're <laughs> cutting my head off. I'll look into the CNN screen and go, at least I'm not listening to Al Roker yeah. yap about the <laughs> fuck. Oh. That would be the end of it. And then yeah. in tragic news, Al would gain all his weight back because he'd feel terrible for costing an American <laughs> life. <laughs> just extending that stomach. Is yeah. this mean that you're cutting Big J out and it's going to be Dude, you two guys? I, did mention, never, I would never leave Big J like that. Dan did We're mention a tag team. We're walking up. Doom, J and I. Soder did say walking up here. He was like, we'll see how this goes. Maybe I don't need Big J anymore. Oh, Oh, As we were entering the studio. Sam Roberts has turned heel. What a rush. Yeah. Well, <laughs> now it seems to me. That's the greatest fucking the Survivor Series one. Right. Now, is that a punter thing? That is a punter oh, thing. Well, bring back your own. I was only kidding because I know wrestling. Yeah. You yeah. do know wrestling. That's my one strong suit. And that's why I'm here today because Sam and I both like wrestling. And Sam pulled a real heel turn. Ron. What was that? Uh, Ron could be the judge of this. Okay, no, I like right. to. Okay, Jay's... I'll, like, I'll be in here like Solomon. Yeah. yeah. So Dan Soder is very upset with me because they sent me an advanced copy of the WWE video game. Or they said they were going to, right? They also said, Roland, we're going to send you one, too. And Roland, we both go, great. And so the game comes yesterday. Yesterday. Afternoon. Didn't... Around 11 a.m. Mine didn't arrive. Roland's did. But Roland got a copy, and Roland, being a very nice guy, knew I was excited. Here's me talking to Sam about the video game all uh -huh. the time. Texts me a picture of the game and says, do you want this for your PS4? I mean, you want to tell, that's an early release. Didn't know it was coming. It doesn't come surprise. out till Tuesday, Ron. Doesn't come and out. you're going to be the king of the comics. All your pot-smoking <laughs> comics will yeah. come over your house. First off, that means Jay has to come to Queens, which right. is a rarity. Oh. So I, this this swings a lot of power. This is a big build for me. But here's where it got a little complicated. Roland, right after that text, decided to come to me bragging because there had been an error in the mail system, and he had gotten his game first. So I informed him I would be taking his game. Well, give the, uh, uh, there, there's no doubt of the way to do this. Is there any other information that you have? So Sam took the game home. Yeah, it's Soder's game. That's you. <laughs> no. Soder's there it game. Is. Yes. No. Ron. You, you had your game. Roland had his game, which he gave to Soder, for you acting like you could understand what the universe should have done. Right. You, got, you got wandering eyes, Robert. You got wandering <laughs> that, eyes. That's savage jealousy. No, because I put in a lot of work for the game. So what? You just took my Miss Elizabeth. I built the relationships for the game. So what? Without me, there'd be no game for me that's or not, Roland. But this is Roland. This is not me. This yes. is Roland made a promise. And you this has nothing to do with you. Would turn heel, and you took the game. Well, everybody knows I don't mind doing that. Yeah, I know. That's what makes you a good heel. But then Roland decided to brag a little bit about it, so I let him know that that wasn't going to fly with me. Well, all I know is I had to play a very lackluster four hours of NBA 2K <laughs> last night, <laughs> wishing it was wrestling. And it was just stinking basketball. Even. You were texting me. Yeah. You were texting me that he was playing it, Ron. He was rubbing it in my face. Yeah, he stole your even, game, and he was playing it. I even created my own character. Yeah. And he, and he, and His he name's had, Johnny Gumption. And his taglines for him. 
Yeah. This has gone deeper than just simply taking someone. Ins- Did you guys ever read Mutiny on the Bounty and the trilogy of that? No. These, no, we play video games. We don't read. <laughs> we were playing wrestling video games. Here's what happened. They get to, uh, they have the mutiny, and it goes great. And on that uh, thing, they, there was some Tahitian women. Okay. And they go and find this island. And they go there, and they go, this island is beautiful. It's Pitcairn's Island. And they, they're in paradise. Not only are they in paradise, there is no way for the English fleet to ever say them because there's a fuck up on the map. Mm-hmm. So they find paradise. So much so that they burn the boat. And they turned around and they said, this is great. Let's sit here. But then they start going, wait a minute. You got a woman and I don't. And they just started killing themselves mm. over and over. Over pussy. Right? Uh-huh. And there they fucked up paradise and sam no that's what you did you had your <laughs> own lust right for the game right and you took someone else's game no. because you feel like and i hate to say this you have white skin and roland doesn't is that a white privilege thing it is the video game should be mine and I, i'm Chester. glad you guys brought this up because i started working on an article for jezebel.com yeah about sam roberts and his, and his white, white privilege, privilege radio show yeah. Yeah. Listen, I was also <laughs> under the impression that my game would be coming in the later mail, later in the afternoon, at which point Dan would get his game in due time. But Wait a what, minute, you said uh, my uh, game. Listen to that, and he, you he, even he called argued. it your game. You know that your game didn't come to you. It came to Roland. <laughs> Roland gave it to Dan. You don't. Your game is in the mail somewhere. I misspoke. The game originally <laughs> See, thought yours. to be my game. He yeah. even arced his eyebrow. He's like an evil emperor. You're just like one of those old like of wrestling games. Yeah, of wrestling. If like you know, society was actually wrestling games, right? But it's evil. But, uh, yeah. But listen. I said, okay, the game originally intended for me will probably be here very soon before Mr. Soder even has a chance to play it. So I'm going to go ahead and take this game, which is justifiably mine, and <laughs> give him my the one destiny. originally That's what for me. I'm the Columbus. Christopher Columbus. No, it wasn't not. his land, but without him. Cortez the killer. Without um, him, we wouldn't be here. Sam? Yeah. Uh, let me just, I don't want to jump in here, but like your listeners, I'm leaving out of boredom. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's uh, he's but kidding. You, no, but he judged correctly. He's kidding. He was joking the whole time. He was obviously on my side. That's why he left. He couldn't keep up the facade any longer. Don't blame it on Radio Pander. That's Let's, not what it was. What? Was <laughs> honest, swift, honest justice. Mike in Maryland. Mike, you're on Sam Roberts show. Hey guys. Uh, first of all, it's a pleasure talking to three legends. Uh, unless Ron already left. Ron he was, no, he left out of boredom. Uh, yeah, he was very bored. Uh, yeah. Anyway, two legends. Uh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Dan Soder and Punt Time Sam Roberts. Punt Time is the nickname. <laughs> I'm going to rename my character in the game uh, Johnny the Gumption, Johnny the Punter Gumption. Yeah. How much, Sam, one question. How much yeah. weed do you smoke? I don't smoke weed at all. Give the game to Soder. That's not, that's not what we're basing Thank this you. on. This is performance that's, enhancing drugs. <laughs> You can't play it. Maybe that's. Do you think that that's why I'm not good at these games? Because I don't smoke weed, so I'm I think, not. I th- no, but I think that's why I'm amazing at these games. <laughs> right. That's that's what's missing in yeah. my uh, in my thing. Yeah, you're blowing it. Hmm. You're like a baseball player that doesn't juice, and it's like the late '90s, and I'm just knocking home runs. Right. And you're I'm doing... like, I'm not even close to McGuire or Sosa. Oh, no one like small ball. How did he get so good? And how did Buddy Barry Bonds get that big? Yep, yeah, that's what you're doing. You're just an honest Joe <laughs> in a cheater's game. But I go like this. But I've got it. I'm gonna steal Dan Soder's baseball bat. <laughs> then he won't get to play at all. You son of a bitch! I'll be better than him. Just and it's out of still not here. I bet who kid will be on my side. I guarantee he won't be. No Dude. human with rash that understands the situation. No one will be on your side. You're you're you were a gonna bad say, man. You were gonna say no rational human being would be on my side. That's why we have who kid. Hey, I don't think that's a nice DJ who kid. Are you just searching for headphones? Yeah, what's up? What's up? There's some, there might be some behind the TV if you want to get to a more comfortable spot. Home. Make yourself at home here on homie come in and get it. Sam Roberts show. Pull yourself up to a microphone. DJ who kid back. Been away for so long. I know, man. Holy shit. 
Dan Soder's here because I know he's he's supposedly interviewing uh, Kim Kardashian's pussy. That's why I came mm-hmm. today. Is that right? You yeah. got the interview with the vagina. The yeah, I want to yell something into a cave. <laughs> yeah. oh. <laughs> you don't like, even need any reverb on the I, mixing board. You are, got... there any, are there any bats in there? <laughs> I'm not coming in there if there's bats in there. It's gonna sound like <laughs> old CBS FM. Like whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. I don't have that echoey feeling. Because you know he's been trying to get the booty, but the booty is permanently booked. It's yeah. like on a it's like on a real tour. But well, the, the booty does all the hip hop shows. Yeah. But yeah. The pussy has been revealed. You know, it's all over the internet. So I believe the saying is the pussy's above my, uh, the booty's above my pay grade. Right. Oh, wow. Right. Now here's go. here's the real reason Dan Soder's here. Okay. <laughs> supposed to be a re- WWE video game, right? Yeah. Advanced copies coming for those who know people who know people, wow. like yours truly, Sam Roberts. Roland got himself on the same list that I was on. I was on before you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> before your list. I was on before for, you for 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 the wrestling games, mm-hmm. right? They come in advance. So Soder's a big wrestling game fan, so am I. The game comes. Mine doesn't arrive. Roland's does. No. Roland texts Soder. He goes, you want the game? Soder does it. Yeah, right, of course. I'm going to be in the city. I will come by and pick it up. That oh, would be fantastic. I have a whole, by the way, whole afternoon now dedicated planning. to playing this game. Before what? shows last night. <laughs> I go in. It's raining? It's raining. Which, by the way, is video game weather. Yeah, yeah I know. The yeah. fact that you did this on a day with and video... you were down. You're a bit down. You need something. Thank up. you very much. I was going through some personal issues, yeah, which I yeah. won't bring on the radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, maybe... What are you, not Bobby Lee? You should have You should have tackled those personal issues. That's what you should have spent the time I wanted to through the therapy of wrestling video Don't games. Don't escape, Dan. Embrace. I got a medical nigga degree. I can help you with really? psychological he does. problems. That's true. Sure. What happens when you think you have a friend <laughs> and he takes your video game? Well, what happened here, who kid was? Stabbed the nigga. Roland. <laughs> That's terrible advice. Dan, don't listen to him. Prescription about to be filled. I can't Roland, hear myself. I can't hear myself. Roland decided to. Can you help him get grab headphones, Roland? Sure. Um, Roland uh, decided to brag. Mm. I think they're behind the TV. He decided to brag to me because I said, Roland, my game didn't come and yours did? This makes no sense. That's I've been doing up. press events with yeah. 2K. I've been doing stuff with WWE. Okay. I've been interviewing people for them. Yeah. I've been putting mentioning their name on the radio. You are wrestling written radio. Exactly. That's it. And so... I go, and then Roland goes, ha ha, looks like you don't have the pull that you thought you had, blah, blah, blah. I also, I just want to say this, clear for the record, I did not tell Roland to do this. I had no <laughs> awareness that he was doing this. Yeah, so it does not affect this specific trial. You're a bystander. No, I'm not. However, I am a victim. However. <laughs> His loyalty is still intact. Yeah. Yes, but Roland, he's talking, talking, talking. So I said, all right, Roland. You're going to give me that game, and I'm going to give Soder my game when it gets here. <laughs> Guess what's still and, not and, here. And, and you know what, you know what Roland said? He goes, no. And I go, yep. And I took it from him. And Roland, that's where you're totally off the hook. What? I demanded that game from you. What? And since I'm even kinder, I'm going to give one of the listeners a free copy of Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Look at that. Look well, at we'll Roland. That's how, that, I'm an guy. angel to everybody. Yeah. Roland is supplying. We'll get to that contest later on. Don't start calling for that game. <laughs> People get all excited when they say that. And they go, we'll give it away in a little while. But... Because I'm kind. You, you are. are. You're a kind man. And you called me. And you knew I liked wrestling. You heard me talk to Sam but about it. Then Sam he ran goes his, heel. You know, do you want, do you want Sam to goes bad guy. I said, Sam, Dan's on his way over here to pick it up. And he goes, I don't care. Oh! Yeah. That's wow. a true story. That is the Shawn Michaels kicking Marty Jannetty through the barbershop window. And when he left, I go, dude, Dan could be here. He goes, tell him it's gone. By the way, I texted Roland uh-huh. right when I was done. Uh-huh. I was like, hey, should I stop by? He said, no, <laughs> Sam took it and went home. See, I took the game and said... And I'm not going to wow. lie. And, said, and, and I felt I, pain. And you, you text, did? well, she can't, can't go there and talk to Sam. I go, unless you go to his house. <laughs> I, I took the game and said, Soder can have mine when it gets here. Now, my copy, or the copy originally intended for me, still nowhere inside. <laughs> still hasn't gotten here. I intended to invite Dan Soder up here, have him on the show for a few minutes, yeah. award him with the game. Be, mend, mend, our, mend our wounds it's, in our it's, friendship. It's still not here, and quite frankly, the other one is at home. <laughs> so there is no guy code going down today. But as, no far, respect. as far as I'm concerned, yeah. I put the time in for the games. <laughs> no. I did ever all the all You're the justifying oh, an evil action. It's a review yeah. copy. Where's your review going? Manifest destiny. God <laughs> said I should have it, so I took it. You're a 
typical, and I believe DJ Hookah will agree with me. This don't say the N word. Don't say the N word. White man. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, white he's a, he's a, he's a wrestling whore. Mm. I am a colonist. Mm. I go. Goddamn R. I. That, but that's what this country was founded on. Yeah, so this, this I like am evil, America. This is like okay? the evil breakdown of an action movie where I'm recording you and you don't know, and you're like, and by the way, I'll poison the waters. You know what? I don't care if they don't drink. <laughs> it's about my profit margins. You know what you are? Yeah, I'm Steven Seagal. You're, and you're an evil oil bearer. You're not. No. You are a Native American who's accepting my smallpox blanket. And I'll tell you. No, I am. I am. <laughs> you'll I take am Casey it. Ryback, and this is under siege. <laughs> and you are a train. No. I'm going to snap you with a flutter of hand movements. No, because even I'm though. I'm going to break your heart. Even though it's ugly, what happened? Mm. It's for the greater good. It's not. Like what Christopher Columbus did. You will not put me on land in Oklahoma and tell me I will not have my game. <laughs> <laughs> For when the fuzzy haired man takes the wrestling, the brave video game, you fuck me. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. There will be great justice reigned upon you, Hell curly yeah. haired man. You sound like a Cherokee. I That's am the for the great tribe. I will have my revenge. <laughs> <laughs> like when the coyote makes eye contact with the snake, I will bite you. He's part, of, he's part of the wolf dick tribe. It mm -hmm. had, you're part of the wolf yeah. dick tribe. It had to be done, though. You know why? Because we had to be here. Dan Soder, you don't look like you have a lot of Native American blood in you, okay? None whatsoever. All we Irish. Took, <laughs> we, Mostly Irish. We took their land, okay? He has a red t-shirt, We had huh? to. Yeah. That's the philosophy. <laughs> Behind me, walking, going home with that game. I had to. I don't He's like it. Fuck. You're right. You're Call right. Sam Roberts is an evil motherfucker. How excited yeah. were you though? I told you. So excited, dude. I had my whole afternoon open. He fucked it up. I had my hash pen ready. I had uh, some rigatoni that I ordered <laughs> from the place down the street. And then, See? in your was, name that you oh, did. Oh yeah. While well, you're oh, getting, while well, you're getting oh. takeout and doing drugs <laughs> i am staying focused on domination you are an evil son of a bitch and this is proving it and this that's is and what happened you sat home you probably still did your drugs and ate your rigatoni absolutely and i just watched 30 for 30 on netflix oh, i mean 30 man. for 30 is a great documentary it's series it's fantastic yeah. only sports knowledge i have is from 30 for 30 that's unbelievable but you know what i did what I invented a character named Johnny Gumption and won the NXT title. <laughs> That's what I did. It's bugging me that you're advancing when I should be advancing. No, you should Affirmative action. Exactly. <laughs> affirmative video game what? action. You'll get your day, Dan Sawyer. Yo. You'll get your day. You'll get your affirmative this action. This is your 40 acres and a mule. But can I tell you something? Saying. You'll get that. But right now it's Evil the 50s. suppressor. Right now it's the 50s and I'm at the front of the bus. Well, I have a dream that on Saturday I will spend all of it playing 2K15. Yeah. And I'm going to make that dream goddamn happen. Well, let me tell you something. <laughs> I'll assassinate you before that happens. Will, okay, that's where I'm coming from. I will you across this goddamn board. That's where I'm coming from. You, you are simply... I'll tell you this. You best what? heel turn in radio has happened on this show right now. <laughs> Look, damn. Because I don't know if it's real. I don't, it's like when the NWO first came out. I right. don't know if you're real oh, or it, fake. It's real. It's, it's real. real. You're, talking, you're talking to a conqueror from a victim standpoint. I understand why it doesn't look good to you. I am the haves, and you are the have-nots. Oh, I hate you, San Roberts. And you have to understand. Understand. And this Sunday, when the case goes down, the haves do what they have to do uh, to maintain their havery. Why is it you're not pussy when it comes to wrestling, but you're pussy with everything else? Why mm -hmm. would you say that I'm not pussy <laughs> about yeah, everything I mean, else? I mean, like subliminally pussy, not really pussy. I'm not pussy at all. This oh. is his one thing. I crush and dominate. <laughs> we, I, I renamed him the punter at the oh, beginning of the oh, show. Shit. Look, I'm not great with the Madden games. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, I got the basketball game. It's still oh, in the plastic. Fucking... Okay, I got the Call of Duty game. It's still in the plastic. I have Call of Duty. I've played it. It's very fun. Thank you, Roland. But can yeah, I tell I you something? Well. What's not in the plastic? What? Is the game that brought me the NXT championship, and that's <sighs> WWE 2K15. Now, here's what you, in the video game, you can interrupt. If he's online, mm -hmm. I can interrupt his career. So all oh, I'm going to do now is shit. interrupt his career. If you get the game, you'll have to wait till Tuesday when it's in stores. That's fine. That's Dave up. in New York, welcome to Sam Roberts' show. Gentlemen, 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 how are you today? Good, pal. So I'm an intern down the street, and guess what I have in my hand? What? 2K15. I work for Fox News. You what? guys suck. Oh. And now, are He's you just calling it. to tease Dan? You got it. <laughs> well, by the way, this is good because Fox News is a way to be a heel, to keep the heel thing <laughs> yeah. going on. It's us. It's Fox News. That's <laughs> my Sam people. It's a part of Fox News. Because you know what I did last night? I sat up. home, I played 2K15, and I watched O'Reilly. Because that's my evening. <laughs> what an evening. Yeah. Then I watched Sir, Megan Kelly. <laughs> Whatever her name is. So, uh, Dave, you're just calling to tease Dan? Well, no. Okay, so as an intern, I have monetary issues. So, Mr. Soder, how much do you want oh, shit. this 
game. Here's the thing. I already paid to pre-order it on Tuesday. I've already paid for the game. It's you full. paid for it already? Yeah, because I got all excited, and I was high. And, I was like, <laughs> and it was like, pre-order 2K15. I was like, yeah, I want Sting. We're gonna, so I ordered it. We're going to give you a copy. We have code for Sting. You could have... I know. <laughs> you made so, a mistake. But this guy, I, this is like trying to blackmail someone that's like, I already got blackmailed. Is it for... <laughs> there's, there's nothing I can... Is it for PS4? No. It's All right, oh, so you're used to saying, anyway. goodbye. Gar- don't bring that garbage at me. <laughs> goodbye. Why don't you bring an Atari game? You try to brag about having a <laughs> Nintendo 64 that I can go buy for fucking 14 bucks? Let's PS3, go- that's below me. Right. <laughs> so you can... Below me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you but, want to go wordplay, that's yes. That's right. I do. That's the show. That's P- Sam Roberts' he show. He's trying to blackmail me for a PS3 copy? What a piece of shit. <laughs> I'll show you. you. That shows the balls. That shows you what kind of people they have intern at Fox News. I mean, I'm not even that big of a heel. That was really bad. Please don't be lying. I hung up on him. I didn't want him anywhere in my life anymore. That is garbage that that's he just came at me with a, PS, a PS3 copy. I could have had that three weeks ago. Disgusting. Yeah, duh. Nobody wants it. Let's go to Snowy in Michigan. Hey, Sam, how you doing? Good, pal. Hey, uh, before I get to that point, uh, Dan, you ever up here in Detroit, Detroit area at all? No, but I want to. I think uh, I, I think the Comedy Castle is still there, or Joey's. Mark, Mark Ridley? Yeah. Ridley Something. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna try to find my way to Detroit. I want to go there. So yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. If you ever do, man, I'm definitely show up here, man. You were my favorite prefill on the show, man. Oh, thanks, bud. Yeah, I'll hopefully be out there soon. Okay, I think I have something I can settle this problem right now. I get to punch Sam Roberts in the face? That sounds like a great solution. Let me get ready to record. <laughs> World star. How dare you, Who Kid? How about a Falls Count Anywhere hardcore match and Who Kid can I be the referee? That's oh, awesome. Yeah. Oh. I feel like you're not taking this seriously, Snowy. I'm not even going to dignify that <laughs> call with the response. He won't give me the match because he's afraid. He knows I'm going to get Terry Funk on him. How yeah. is it a Sam Roberts for Stan Soder for a 2K15 match? Light fans on fire. I'm going to throw him through a barn door. <laughs> we got a burning barn door match, Sam Roberts and Terry Funk. Let's, let's go to. It sounds like there might be somebody who finally has a bit of intelligence as far as this issue goes. Let's or someone going to try to blackmail me for a PS2 game? <laughs> <laughs> I got Crash Bandicoot, the second one. Let's go to uh, Tim in Philly. Hey, Sam, how's it going? Good, pal. Uh, I grew up in Westchester, so I support anything that you do. All right, thank you, Tim, very much. And Tim, Tim supports me. There you go. Westchester has my back because they understand. Okay, Westchester gets it. Okay, the, I, this was something. I don't think Westchester backs evil. Oh, Westchester backs evil. It doesn't. My, girlfriend, apparently... my girlfriend's from there. She's lovely. Oh, she's got evil in her soul, Dan. She's got a no, black she hole where most people have she a soul. She understands the, that what I'm going through yeah. in the past 24 hours uh-huh. has been extremely difficult. Yeah. So she understands that I need more video game time now <laughs> to recuperate. <laughs> we'll play a little basketball game then. <laughs> she's not giving you no pussy? I mean, I get the pussy, but oh, okay. when I'm done. Right, right that's, that's about right. four minutes. Like, what do you do in the meantime? Yeah, I'm not a sociopath. I fuck yeah. for eight minutes, I come, and then I go along with my well, Play some video guy. games and smoke drugs. <laughs> yeah, then I do a lot of drugs and put on sweatpants <laughs> and sleep <laughs> for a, an, an abnormal amount of It's hours. really not about the pussy when it goes away, people, huh? Yeah, I, I think mm. we're like... Yeah, there are, but I don't think we're as... Once you have it, it's like, okay, that's there for yeah. when I need it for later. Sam look like he don't really care about pussy. Because I'm married. Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you look a like pers- a person that don't give a fuck about pussy. Because I know that there's a person who lives in my apartment with me who... That's going to give you pussy. She'll definitely have sex with yeah. me. Wow. Definitely. Holy. So it's like, okay, like I, if I want to, part of being married again, a lot of people don't know this, and that's yeah. why I encourage marriage between people who love each other. I can touch her vagina at any point in the day. Just touch it. In like put my morning, hand on it. Doesn't matter, and it's not assault at church. And it's you don't marriage. have to like. You don't have to do stuff. No, you can just be like, "Hey, can I touch your pussy?" You don't and even have to like, ask. Quite yeah, frankly. we have a legal contract. That's yeah, crazy. You can. Of course you can. So you go pull. I mean, you can pull it down. Look at it. Like you can just tell her to pull it down. You just look at it. You yeah. don't have to do nothing. Like do I just it. want to look at your pussy for a bit. I can do that. She'd be like, "Oh, damn, you did that." Yeah. Which is why <laughs> if you if you did that your wife would be like you kinky motherfucker exactly you want to just look at my look at my pussy <laughs> just saying it at you look at my pussy which Jeez. is why I don't have to worry about it you know what I mean like I mean, it's not something that's sitting there worrisome like I don't worry about pussy mm. and I don't worry about two K fifteen because I got <laughs> yeah, both those things coming. you motherfucker I knew you were fucking going it right was there. a matter of time yeah, I had both those things I relaxed because <laughs> I felt my body relax for a second yeah, yeah, yeah. talk about pussy and, and all that you you're terrible dick you're terrible that's not true. I even brought a backpack to 
<laughs> you thought you were going to get to put the game oh. inside. You were originally invited with the intention of the game being here. I don't know. Yeah, you're, you're horrible. You sidetracked him with the pussy and looking yeah. at your wife. And then he Clint yeah. and all that. Then and then reminded him. Yeah. Yeah. I have vagina and you're a video evil, game. Man. You're evil. Yeah. Is. I think we're proving that this Hashtag. show. Hashtag it's just not true. Evil. Let's go to Brandon in California. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon. Hey, Sam. How you doing? Dan, first of all, I think you should be mad at Roland. Roland's the one that gave it up. He should have manned up and not let Sam take it. Sam just... <laughs> That's understandable. That you know, don't get mad at Sam. Sam's not at fault here. Don't no, go. Sam is at fault, though. That's what you're forgetting. He's the evil one. He knew it was coming. He could be content and be upset at 2K15 right now mm. with where his video game is and not have... upset at the balance of nature, which is what you've done. Yeah, but well, how am I? Imagine how I would feel if you were playing the game and not me. Uh, I, I'll tell you how you feel. I would be sending a ton of pictures <laughs> <laughs> and videos of me basically just holding the game, yeah. not even playing it. Hey, don't you know this guy? Uh, yeah. Anyway, just playing. <laughs> Yeah, you're going to love this feature. Oh, I'd be the heel at that point. Right. But I'm not. So you're I'm soaking it in. I'm really... Let me ask you something, Dan Soder. If the situation were reversed, yeah. how would you have handled it? Exactly like you're handling it. <laughs> <laughs> Gotten some radio out of it and, <laughs> and played a game. But Brandon is, you know, I understand what you're saying. But I did. I told Roland I was his boss and he had to do it. So, I mean, that's kind of a dick move, too. See? <laughs> See who you're see who you're backing right now, Brandon? A pure evil evil man. It's hashtag, not true. hashtag no, evil. Sam is not evil. That's Sam right. Sam is the man. That's Let right. Me tell you right now, Sam, uh November fifth, mm -hmm. little Sam Roberts was born. Just to give you a heads up and fluff your balls just a little bit. You wow. named your child Sam Roberts? That's crazy. Yes, sir. Remember, you, I called him last week, I, well, two weeks ago, I think it was, and I'll let you know that we named him that, and he just was born. So. Wow. wow. Sam Roberts. That's Good amazing. birthday. That's my best friend Mike's birthday, too. That's November amazing. 5th is a great birthday. And great name. That's also my name. Sam Roberts. <laughs> Sam Roberts. Sam Roberts is, your son is a great man. Tiny little Sam Roberts. The That's man amazing. I'm sitting across Fantastic. from in a room right now. Wow. Is showing me that he's made of pure evil. Let me tell you something, Brandon. Your son... <laughs> If he is raised in my image in any way, mm -hmm. will go on to win, to conquer, mm. to strike fear into the hearts of underlings, uh, yeah. Yeah, he, and he, to always be on top <laughs> of the mountain. Pussies. You're terrible. And promo. to touch vaginas whenever he pleases. Look at him. Uh, yeah. Is that right, Hookin? Yes, of course. Sir. That's it. Thank you very much, Brandon. Uh, Brandon. Let's go to Larry in Virginia. What's up, Larry? Well, let me tell you, Hollywood prime time, Sammy Sweetheart, the Up and Roberts, the professional broadcaster. <laughs> That's right. And you, Dan Shellis Soder, <laughs> oh, as I told son. you before. That's oh, got to sting. Man. If you're going to be the man, you've got to beat the man. And the man, <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> the man. I am shit. Space man. He's like the one on Space Mountain. When he goes ahead... And when, when his avatar walks the aisle, it's right. just in the squared circle. That's right. You've got to beat the man right. to be the man. That's right. Whoa. That's right. <laughs> He's right. Larry's right. This is that we're almost begging for someone to call up with the Ric Flair no, 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 no. Ric Flair shit right yeah. there. Man. Sam is on his Ric Flair. In my when I go all the, I live up outside of the city in a beautiful place called Westchester, <laughs> and it's hard to keep these thumbs down my, on these buttons. My game costs more okay. than your house. <laughs> I'm friends with all the biggest radio personalities. <laughs> We're on the air. <laughs> you really are. Yeah, and how do you Ric Flair up? I can touch my wife's vagina at my leisure. I'm looking at vaginas whenever <laughs> I feel like it. There's a lot of good balance. You got uh, both fans are like going for you, going for Dan. So yeah. It's a good look today. I mean, people know. They know. That yeah. I'm in the right? Yeah, no, that's do. not what I meant. I'm the Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> I'm the Dusty Rhodes. You are. Simple American Dan <laughs> just wants a video game You're the to play of a with his friends. Son of a plumber from Austin, Texas. And guess what? Coming to play a video game. And guess what? My dad's a rich businessman who gave me a cushy job. That's hot. And us, the we're the one percent soder, and we got all the video games. I'm gonna start doing the wrist turn like Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. Each of these robes they cost ten thousand dollars. You son of a bitch. That's some real shit. David in Tennessee, welcome to Sam Roberts Show. So I want to preface this by saying I love you and I love the show. Thank you. But I would name my kid Adolf. <laughs> I'd name you. Well, oh, then, we, uh, no. David, we all have uh, bridges what? to cross, but I think... Uh. 
I think that'd be a great mistake. I think naming a child Sam Roberts breeds them for nothing but success. How about Dan Soder? That'd be a good thing. Ah, Look, you, listen, like you listen to today's the, the the first break of today's show, and you tell me which you want your kid named Dan Soder. A kid who's gonna well, he's a good guy, but he just never makes that it to the top. Break's coming, and when it does, <laughs> everyone will be happy for him what? and not upset like they are when Sam has his, we're giant ten year olds. One, this day, is one day Dan Soder is gonna get the the big movie role that he's been waiting for, no. and he's gonna he's gonna or get just, a, or just one sold out show on the road. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm skipping a few steps, but he's gonna get up to at this th- point. I would just like the sold out show occasionally. No, you're gonna get up there. You're gonna get up to the Academy Awards stage. You're gonna be nominated for an Oscar, and you're gonna say there are a lot of people I'd like to thank, but the one person I want to say no thanks to. Is that goddamn Sam Roberts? Hey, Sam, He's I an did asshole. It. I did it, Sam. I did it, and I brought my 2K15 with me here tonight. <laughs> here it is. It's like pull it out it's, the tuck. It's 2042, <laughs> yeah. and as white people have lost the majority in yeah. the world, I just want to say there's still one champion left. Yeah. <laughs> also, Sam Roberts hasn't been heard from since he did that weird blackface stunt. He has not been. Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure he's a morning show in Des Moines. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. Oh man. It's about as far as he's gotten. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? Well, listen. Dan, I think we got to the bottom of a lot here. Yeah. I think there's no doubt that uh, I'm right on this one. I, I think that's what we've proved. I, mean, I, I want I, you I, to know, and who can, can be uh, a witness, I'm going to terrorize you playing that video game. Nonstop. I will bring my war to you, <laughs> Sam Roberts. Once you have it, it's You over, just created, huh? I'm going to create a uh, 2K15 ISIS team <laughs> and just attack <laughs> your video game. <laughs> Constantly. I'm going to tell you something. My creative character, his name's Johnny Gumbo. I'm going to be looking for him. <laughs> not jo- no, not Johnny Gumbo. Gumbo? Uh, no. You're trying to steal <laughs> yeah. all the data? Uh, <laughs> Gumbo. No, Johnny Gumption. And his tights on the side of him, they say, hashtag Gumption. Get the fuck out of here. You're lying. God damn, I want to play this game. That's right. Uh, well, listen. Th- thanks for having me on. Listen, it's been a pleasure. I wish I could. Uh, uh, there was a parting gift for you to go home with, but there's not. This is like the time, like this is the point where I'm supposed to be a good guy and have a game for you. Yeah, but there's yeah. no. There's but no. there is none. You know what I am gonna do? What? Um, like a kid waiting for his dad to pick him up at t-ball practice. Right. I'm gonna go by your office and like just look, and be like, just hmm. see if there's mail there. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, there mail? Uh, this is like uh, my dad. Once I was driving, my my friend was over at the house. And the whole time, he wanted to borrow some movie on mm. tape, right? And I said, yeah, sure, you can borrow it. So I just brought the case oh. with me in the car. And uh, and I gave him the case. And he was getting out of the car, but he felt it. And it was light. And he opened it up. And he goes, there's no tape in here. Yeah. And I was like, I know. That's the joke. Goodbye. Oh. Oh. See? And then my dad looked at me while my friend was still in the car. And he goes, you didn't bring the tape with you? <laughs> I was like, no. And he goes, like, you're not, you don't have the tape to pull out now and give to him? I was like, in fifth grade. I was like, no. And he goes, that's the difference between a funny joke and just being mean. Yeah. Like, that's a wrong to do to somebody. You're a bad person. I'm going to go through your mail now. <laughs> it really hurts. And by the way, if it does show up today, I'm coming back in to do shows Again, in like five hours. I have a gift for you. What? A, thank you, Ron. Oh, my God. Ernie Banks signed baseball. Ernie Banks? Yeah. What is it with you that people want to buy your friendship so badly? I don't know what's going because on Because I'm a good guy that kind of sometimes yeah, he just needs a hands up. A hands <laughs> up? I don't know what that means. He just grabbed it, too. See, oh. so that clearly was something. I'm, well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm ready to record if he wants to smack you and put He's, it on. No, he can't smack me. He's, He's not alive. You? No. Even That's not I, what he's it, here to do. He's, even I can film it. He got his whatever baseball. Kirby Puckett baseball. <laughs> I don't know who signed it. Ernie Banks. Ernie Banks. Ernie Hudson baseball. He got it. The guy from Ghostbusters. And Roland is a real nigga, man. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Yeah. But. I would, and I wouldn't want to slap him. I'd want to power bomb you through a table. We, uh, <laughs> the only way that I could feel better about <laughs> it. Hacksaw Jim is on the phone from Massachusetts. Hacksaw. Oh, shit. <laughs> Thank you, Hacksaw. Oh, now, shit. When we come back, I appreciate you coming by, Dan Soder. Yeah, I wish I had a game to send you. When we come back, I'm talking you to... If it shows up, leave it in the lobby. Out. You don't wish anything, <laughs> motherfucker. Chris McCarvel is going to be in here in just a couple minutes. He ha- he did the, the Banksy documentary. So, yeah, yeah watch mm. it. It's awesome. It's great, isn't it? Yeah, it's awesome. Wow. He basically he did a, a documentary. Banksy was in New York about a year ago, last October. And he put up 30... Of his works of art, I don't know what you call him, but you know, yeah, Banksy's the street days. artist. Uh, and in, over the course of is it thirty one oh. days? Because the one day the police wouldn't let him do it. But over the course of thirty days, he did graffiti art um, in a different location in New York, and they were all secret. And he put them up on his website when 
like every morning, mm -hmm. like 1130-ish, he put up a photo on his website, and he said, here's the exhibit. It was a huge story all over New York. New York went fucking nuts for it. Yeah. There were Travis and Troy and the guys in the office were, like, leaving work early literally every day. So they could see this Banksy thing That's before correct. somebody graffitied over it. Yeah. Wow. Because you'd have to you'd look at the clue and you'd find out where it was. It turned New York on its head. It did. Yeah. And we, that's a tough thing to do. Very to get tough. New York interested in something. Yeah, especially for a whole month. Yeah, exactly. But New York grabbed, is like stuff for a week and then they're like, Yeah, it's old. It grabbed New York's Yeah, exactly. It grabbed New York's attention. And so this guy, uh, Chris McCarble, did a documentary where he took a ton of like YouTube footage and and photos that people took and vines and tweets. Opie's tweets are in it. Yeah. Oh, uh, wow. Travis and Troy both have YouTube videos of theirs that are used in the documentary. He completely made it uh, crowdsourced, not funded, crowdsourced to make this HBO documentary. It's going to be on Monday. Uh, but after this break, he will be in studio. We'll be talking Banksy, the documentary, and everything else. Stay tuned. Sam Roberts Show continues in a moment. Sam Roberts, Friday Show. We'll be right back. We now return to Sam Roberts, Friday Show. Sam Roberts show. I don't know exactly where DJ Hook is done. He'll be here. I, I'm assuming he'll wander in at some point. If not, we'll talk to him in a few minutes. He's probably working on Eminem's mixtape or something. But right now, just walked into the studio. Chris McCarble is here. I said it right, right? Yeah. You know what I did? I don't even like. I don't even say it right. No. <laughs> I went and I found uh, other interviews you had done. Yeah. Specific. I just listened to the beginning, just yeah, yeah. so I could listen to them introducing you yeah. and you not wow. correcting people. Right. And I assumed <laughs> I if wouldn't you, have corrected you. Right. If you didn't, <laughs> if you didn't correct them, I hope that they had it right. Yeah. McCarville is right. Yep. Did yeah. you ever think about you know when you entered into the world of of show business entertainment? Yeah. Changing that. Uh, you know, it's funny. I. Just started thinking about it the other day. It's been coming up a lot. Well, because like people, you know, they butcher my name and have my whole life, and I'm used to it. I, I don't really care. But there's something about having it butchered on uh, live television in front of yeah. millions of people where you're sort of like, oh, wow, this is rough. You know? Or like now you're entering that, that zone where you have to give people your Twitter. Where can they find you on Twitter? And, yeah, well, yeah. McCarble, but it's M-O-U. You know, and they're already like, whatever. So you have to like <laughs> think of like a name like Chrissy Max or something like that. Yeah. Uh, well, listen, the reason that you need to do all this stuff now and that you have to care about all this public opinion about you is because you're the director of Banksy Does New York, the yeah. uh, HBO documentary, uh, which is great. I got to watch it because HBO did a smart thing. They put it out on HBO Go first, right? Uh, just to kind of give everybody a sneak peek. But it's out uh, on HBO. It's Monday, right? Yep. At Monday 9 p.m. At, uh, 9 p.m. That's right. And what you did was you took the Banksy thing that happened in New York. And it's not a documentary about Banksy. It's about last October... Uh, Banksy, the you know street artist, he came to New York in secret, and he set up this website, and he said every day in the month of October, I'm going to do a work of art throughout New York City somewhere. Once it's up, I'll take a photo, and I'll put it up on my website, and then it belongs to the world, I guess, after that, and that was it. Yep. Um, and it really was, because you know I was working, obviously, every day in the city during that month, and there were, you know, some Banksy fans up here with me, but even people who didn't know who he was, the city really did kind of turn upside down for this thing. Everybody here was obsessed. Even if they didn't know who Banksy was, all of a sudden they were experts and they were trying to find, because he'd give these little, it was almost like a, a, half of them were like audio tours of Graceland. Yeah. Like he'd do these little <laughs> right. audio clips where he was pronouncing his own name wrong and, uh, and stuff like that, but he wouldn't say exactly where it was. So you had to figure out the clues and find it. It was basically a scavenger hunt. Um, did you know when this was happening that it was something you wanted to document? Uh, no, I didn't actually. And, um, 
Sheila and Evans at HBO approached me like within a few weeks of him leaving. So that we didn't start making the movie until it was over. And mm-hmm. that was kind of the uh, inspiration for the style of making the film, which is really, you know, calling user generated footage. So it really becomes this portrait of New York City because so much of the film is actually footage shot by New Yorkers. Well, yeah, aside from interviews that you did, it's totally crowdsourced. And the first yeah. thing that I saw, it's all like you went out and you contact, actually, a couple of the guys that we work with were guys that their videos ended up in the doc. Oh, no way. Uh, yeah. And Opie, who yeah. does the show, his tweets were used <laughs> yeah, that's in right. the doc. Yeah. Uh, and one of, uh, you're lucky, I think, because my buddy who I share an office with said, um, all right, ask him when I'm going to get my money. But yeah. then he got his check yesterday. So, oh, cool. So they mailed said, the checks out already? He said, let him know I'm yeah. okay. But otherwise, yeah. there that was, was going to be a problem. That was speedy. But it seemed, <clears> like, <throat> it seemed like such a pain in the fucking ass to have, because there was so much footage yeah. to have to figure out, okay, how do I turn all this stuff that was shot by other people into something that's like a narrative, that's a story? Right. Yeah, I mean, uh, I had a great team that I was working with yeah. at Matador, and we basically searched hashtag Banksy NY, hashtag better out than in. You know, when people put a hashtag on something, they're not only bringing attention to it, but they're actually creating this like massive online archive. So there's this footage that's all sitting there, and it'll probably be sitting there for the rest of all eternity, like yeah. until the internet is dead. And uh, we were able to access all that footage to, to tell this story. So it's kind of... It was built into the the process of making the film, was like editing that footage right from the top. And did you have to deal with people that were like, well, <laughs> Mr. Hollywood wants my Banksy video, it's going to cost him. Like, did people not really understand uh... that... They didn't have that big of a value because everybody was able to video this thing? Yeah, it's funny. I mean, for the most part, people really just wanted to be a part of it because uh-huh. if they're putting their footage out there, they want an audience. I mean, that's the thing with making a documentary with this kind of archival footage versus like more traditional archival footage. You know, somebody might have some old VHS tapes that you need to like access and you have to pay them all this money for it. But if somebody's putting something online, they really just want an audience. They're already, you're, already, you're meeting them halfway. Mm-hmm. So uh, it was a lot easier. I mean, you know, we offered people a nominal amount of, you know, a fee, licensing fee. but. Really Really, they were super fans. These are people that were like taking yeah. time off work and doing whatever they could to be a part of this story in you know as it was happening. Yeah, the guys that I talked to were more excited about getting invited to the premiere of this movie than they were about getting paid at anything for their right. footage because they figured they were just taping it with their phone and then putting it on the internet because it was cool. Yeah, and all of a sudden it becomes this thing. Uh, did you did you realize that the story was? Not necessarily Banksy, but New York and what happened to New York. Like, yeah, is that, that's what you wanted to get out. It's, it's kind of um, it's sort of my interest in storytelling is this sort of crowdsourcing footage. Um, I did another film called Me at the Zoo a couple of years ago, told about the rise of Chris Crocker, the kind of arguably the first internet celebrity, the Leave Britney Alone kid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, at the same time, it was talking about the kind of the 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 phenomenon of the internet celebrity and sort of how YouTube came to be. And that was all told through YouTube, you know, YouTube videos and different you know different people's footage. So it's a it's a kind of style of storytelling that I'm really interested in. It's sort of like crowdsourcing a story because a story already exists in a public space. Is it more difficult though? This whole YouTube generation, where it's like if you really want your content out there, you can just put it out there. We yeah. can't promise that you'll make any money, right? But we, you can get an audience for your stuff. As somebody who's in documentary film. Is it more difficult to be taken seriously? It's like, no, 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 I'm worth somebody paying me to do something. I mean, I don't know. If it wasn't for YouTube and for that type of, like, easy platform, like, yeah. I wouldn't be making documentaries. I don't even know if I could have made a documentary in a, tr- in a traditional way. Like, my style of, of storytelling has always been about, you know, using the Internet in a really direct way. Mm-hmm. So, And at the same time, I think we're all kind of making documentaries about our lives. Like, everyone's putting photos and videos and, you know, any comments you're leaving online, all of that is staying out there. And it really is collectively a picture of your life. Yeah, that is kind of amazing. That it seems like, from your point of view, anything that you want to, any subject that you want to tackle in a documentary, there's enough backstory that they've put out there themselves that yeah. you could take Joe Blow on the street and find their life story through their Facebook posts and their Instagrams and their and their YouTube stuff. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if somebody was like going to make a documentary about me, like half of that footage would have to come from the web. I mean, right. you know, every, every comment, all of my conversations are either happening like in real life, but most of them are happening online or in text. So if you were going to try to create an accurate snapshot of like what my day is like, it would be kind of hustling between these two spaces. Yeah. Well, I mean, I didn't know how to pronounce your name until I Googled right. you. So exactly. I, had to, <laughs> I had to find the answers to my questions there too. Were you, uh, how do you get to the point 
as a documentarian when HBO is calling you? Because that was that the first time that's happened that they called you and said, "Hey, yeah, that's got to be a crazy feeling." It was cool. I mean, I, I was uh, doing another project with them. I'm doing a series. Uh, it's a relaunch of HBO's Real Sex called Sex Now, that's and cool. uh, it's basically about sex and the internet. It's sort of like how you know, since that show is on the air, a lot has changed, and sex culture has really moved online. So the way relationships and and sex culture have actually changed because of technology and social media. So the the series kind of focuses on that. So I was already working with them, and they you know were familiar with my style, and just sort of felt like it was a good combination. And is, is that sort of a I can't believe it I've made it moment? <laughs> I mean, at least in that world, like with them, yeah. yeah, yeah, it meant a lot. It meant a lot. And you know, I, I I really love working with them. They're they're just super supportive. So it's been great. And I mean, I, I would assume that you know going in when you start to do documentaries, HBO is one of the places that kind of houses these documentaries that are historically pretty critically acclaimed. Yeah, like exactly. they, they don't put shit on their on their channel. Yeah, I mean it's validating. For yeah, sure. yeah. yeah. Uh, so what's the what's the hook of the of the series that you're doing now? So is it are yeah. you following like Tinder culture and stuff like we that? Are, you know, we're doing a segment on Tinder uh -huh. and Grinder, like hookup apps. Yeah. Um, but we're also doing segments on you know various individuals that are you know and their stories and how they play out online. Like there's this one uh, character, Sierra Lynch, and she's a humiliatrix. Uh -huh. So it's a kind of progression of the dominatrix, but she humiliates men. She doesn't take her clothes off. She doesn't meet anybody. It's strictly online or through videos, through phone calls. She has this massive following. She's 25 years old. She's wow. bought two houses and Jesus. put herself through school. I gotta um, start humiliating dudes. She's, you know, she's a genius. I mean, she's really an entrepreneur. And uh, yeah, her services involve like financial domination. Well, she'll she'll just like empty men's bank accounts. And people get off on that. And they get off on it. Yeah, That's they so have to buy her a certain amount of things by the end of the week, or uh -huh. she'll tell their wife. She does blackmail. They have to give her their like you know home phone numbers and all this stuff. But they want to, the whole idea is it's it's this whole like elaborate role play. Yeah. And these guys out there really want that. That's so, so weird because you always hear those stories of like, well, you know, he was cheating, but you could tell he wanted to get caught. Like, I had no idea there were guys that literally get off on being on the edge of getting caught. Yeah, exactly. It's a fetish. That emptying out your bank account <laughs> is a fetish. Yeah. I mean, there's one scene where she's at the mall and she's on the phone with this guy and she's videotaping jewelry and she's like, that's the one I want. That's the one I want. <laughs> and he's got to, he's got so much time to get it for her. Or it's she's like, going to tell his she's wife. She's going to tell his wife. Yeah. Oh my God. That's so great. What a great business right. she's in. That's the, see, like the internet has provided this opportunity for her. And yeah. So, that's, that's a weird thing. Like with the internet and with all the porn that's available and everything, literally the, whatever you can think of sexually yeah. is possible now. Exactly. I mean, what 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 the show kind of focuses on is how people are now getting together, people are meeting, people who have these very specific fetishes are able to express them or find an outlet for them. You know, things that typically would have been a lot harder now is like you know at the sort of you know at their fingertips. So yeah, um, yeah the show's it's fun. It's going to be great. It's, it, it's uh, airing in uh, February. I think. Is it tough for you? And it's kind of your job as a guy who's there to document to stay non-judgmental. But yeah. is it tough for you to be like, what the fuck is wrong with that guy? Yeah, I'm pretty non-judgmental um, in 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 life, but then also when I'm doing this sort of thing, I try to look for like the best in everybody and when I'm when I'm making, mm -hmm. I, you know, none of these projects are like indictments. I mean, there's filmmakers that do that, and it's important for those filmmakers to be out there. It's not so much my style or what I, you know, how I, you know, what I contribute. Uh, but yeah, I can. I have my own private dialogue <laughs> yeah. happening for sure. Like, keep your money, dude. What are yeah, you exactly. Doing? It's not. Since the nut is not worth it, um, I, and I was thinking about when you were talking about the Tinder. You got to talk to this guy who actually he works here, and he's one of the guys who used one of his videos in the Banksy doc. Oh, okay. Because I've talked to him, and he's on Tinder. I don't know if he's using it as much for this purpose now as he was like a few months ago. But he got into this thing where he he was so off looking for relationships, like you couldn't have been looking for a relationship less. That he went on Tinder and just made like a sport out of it uh -huh. to the point where not only was he trying to get just as many dates in general as possible, but he was trying to get three and four dates in a day. Just, and it, and he just had, like an athletic feat. Yeah. Yeah. And he had he had a one drink maximum. Yeah. So I'll meet you if you want. If you don't want to meet at my house, fine. You don't trust me. We can get one drink. Yeah. But this is strictly 
for was hooking the, up. Was the idea, right. So he's like, if I don't get laid after one drink, I'm moving on to the next date. A hundred percent. So it's like speed dating. but Yeah, but Tinder. speed fucking. Yeah. yeah. That, I mean, uh, it, that's interesting. I think a lot of people are using it for that. And that's kind of what the show gets into a little bit is like how it's actually a hookup app. I mean, you know, Tinder really positions itself like a dating app, which right. it is. And there are people that go on there thinking they're going to meet their husband or whatever. But um, and that happens. But then also, yeah, it's like it's speed fucking for a lot. And, and, and it's one of those things where you'd think you'd like, yeah, that's what I'd like to use it for. Yeah. But like you had no idea anybody could pull this off. Like how how is he finding women that are like, yeah, I'm looking to just hook up real quick, too. Yeah. I think people are basically getting online as the bars are getting out. Uh-huh. And that's like <laughs> yeah, I, I'm tapping out on the night in terms of finding like, let yeah. me just. And everybody's like on the same page. That's pretty amazing. That's amazing. Well, and, and that, they're drunk. <laughs> right. So they're not exactly making the wisest decisions. Um, that's to come. That's the future. We're talking, of yeah. course, uh, with uh, Chris McCarville, the director of Banksy Does New York, which is that's the Monday thing. Is it exciting yeah. still that to know that this is premiering on Monday or are you kind of in the mindset that most people have seen it on HBO Go? No, I think most people haven't seen it yet. Um, and I'm excited about the premiere. I mean, it's like kind of a big deal for me to like have something on television yeah. as much as like I spend my whole life online and really like I don't remember the last time I watched anything on TV. Mm -hmm. Just the notion of being, you know, having my work on TV is still like pretty gratifying. And so. you do know that as much time as you spend concentrating on what people are doing on the Internet, there's huge, a huge portion of the country that is just not watching stuff on the internet they're still waiting until monday at nine o'clock because that's yeah. what time this program that they want to see comes on television yeah it's There's... a little mind-boggling to people like us who have, are out of that world yeah. but it's still a huge number of people yeah i mean I, the cable companies bank on that i mean yeah. that's that's really where their their bread and butter is it's like a lot of america is still watching tv yeah were you a banksy fan before the doc I knew about him, and uh, you know, I don't know if I was a fan, but I wasn't not a fan. Mm -hmm. it, he was he was on my radar, mm -hmm. um, but you know, it's interesting because just in the course of making this film, I really came to understand his work a lot more, and I I, I dig it. I mean, I dig the kind of broader themes of what he's doing because I think in the past when I saw his work, it was always like the individual pieces, like the stencil will throw up here, and right. like, none of it necessarily made an impression because I wasn't like in that world, but. Um, seeing like a project like this residency this collective project and understanding how you know oftentimes it wasn't about the piece it was about the location like he was actually using the piece to just drive attention and eyeballs to a space you know maybe like like will it's point for example that scene in the movie you know this is like a area in queens that is uh slated to be demolished 250 small businesses are going to be shut to make uh additional parking for city field and and luxury shopping and the guys who are living there you know the guys who stole that sphinx you know it's, it's the scene in the film Film, yeah, they do it in plain view of everyone because their philosophy was well We don't know who this artist is, but clearly he's important and he just dropped this thing off here It's not tied down. So somebody's gonna take it, it may as well be us because we live here, right? And it's and it's and it's it's weird because uh, one of the things I picked up from the doc was uh, a lot of the the nuances and stuff in into what the artwork meant and why he did it in certain spots and what you know like what the uh, Taliban jumping on Dumbo really means yeah and I was interested because I feel like I would want to be bashing people over the head with making sure that everybody understands what this means because you know the majority of the people that see Banksy or any work of art really sees it on a surface level and just goes oh I get the pun that's cute and moves on and they yeah. don't even get you don't even get what I'm saying yeah yeah I mean, I'm sure it would be frustrating for him, but also it's sort of like his he's got so much going on. I don't think he's like overthinking each one of these little pieces. Uh -huh. But at the same time, yeah, I mean, I, th I think the little pun is really the hook. And that's yeah. his way of getting people's attention and getting the broadest audience possible. They're like pop songs. What did you think of not only the people that stole the art, but uh, and this I was watching with my wife and she was really straight. She saw the, she thought the movie was sad. Uh -huh. And I was like, <laughs> really? She was like <laughs> upset by the movie. Like huh. she's like, that was really sad. Yeah. And I was like, why? Sad for New York, like because of the ending. No, she. Not that I'm a good. <laughs> she <laughs> thought, yeah, because Banksy's not here anymore. <laughs> no, she thought it was sad because of almost every work of art being graffitied over so quickly. Interesting. Yeah. And it, I didn't even really pick up on the fact that that would be sad. I, I felt like, 
when you're doing street art, that's just kind of life. Like, it exists in a moment, and that's that. I think if nobody bothered to engage with it, that would be sad. Like, I think for a street huh. artist, you'd be like, wow, nobody cared to even tag over my work or, like, take a picture in front of it or try to cut it out of a wall. Like, I think it's, you know, that that type of art in particular is about being in, engaging the public. And mm-hmm. I think that, like, it's about a conversation. If you're having that conversation, no one's participating. That's a bummer, you know? Yeah, so do you think that... Do you think that the Banksy stuff was more about the work that he was doing, like looking at the pieces and analyzing them, or was he more interested in the reactions that people would have? Uh, you know, both. I mean, I think that the pieces, a lot of them are really well thought out, mm-hmm. and some of them are really highly constructed. Um, but then, you know, for for me at least, what I was taking away was actually at the end, it really was this kind of broad vision. You know, either it was like a you know, critique of uh, like an institutional critique of the art world, or it was about the gentrification of urban space in New York. Uh-huh. It was like kind of broader themes that seemed like he was getting at over and over again. And you kind of had, to, you know, you had to look at the whole residency to get to it. Yeah. I kind of loved the one. My favorite exhibit was not was, was the one where he did it in like the hood. And the two guys came and they covered it with a box and they charged people whatever, 20 bucks if they want to take a photo of it. Yeah. Because that is exactly what you're saying. I think that as much as Banksy fans were kind of upset by that because they're like, well, it's supposed to be ours. We should. I think Banksy would love that, that they kind of took ownership of it and, and created this thing because he did yeah. invade their area and, and exactly. create this thing. And they took it right back. Yeah. That's exactly what happened. They took it back. And uh, and then the public, people who would never go to these neighborhoods were suddenly there right. with their cameras out looking to take a picture. And those guys were like, you know, this is our neighborhood, so if you want to take a picture, you have to pay us. Right. Because and, and it wasn't like they were mugging people and it wasn't like they were they weren't doing anything it was a legit enterprise like (laughs) they actually they were capitalizing Uh on an opportunity that banksy had afforded them it makes perfect sense it was a street museum yeah yeah (laughs) people were talking actually after the fact someone talked about it as like street theater and i was like okay yeah well yeah i mean one of the things that you've said about this is that you think of banksy almost more as a performance artist yeah which is why i kind of especially after the movie looked at it as a maybe these 30 days in new york like the whole thing was was the exhibit, you know what I mean? And yeah. the way because it takes a lot for New Yorkers to kind of step outside of their grind, you know sure. what I mean? Just the daily self-important, this is what I'm doing, focus thing. For them to step outside of that and kind of get involved in this other group that's going on over here, for somebody to command attention for 30 days, anywhere really, for somebody to command the attention of the public for 30 days. Yeah. In 2013, which is when it happened, and especially in New York, is a pretty phenomenal thing. And that kind of, I felt like that was what Banksy was doing. I think that was the, I think that was the work. That was yeah. the project in a way. It was the spectacle, right? And he sort of hacks the media. He hacks social media. I mean, in, in the, you know, in baiting the public and creating works that he knew people would be reblogging, taking pictures of, posting. You know, the, the work was playing out online simultaneously. So it was also right. kind of speaking to this other kind of street, which is the internet. Mm-hmm. You know, I thought that was kind of a, that was a cool approach. Street art lends to that anyway. Like a lot of street art now can be seen online. And that's sort of like, it's sort of like the, the opportunity for street art to really be seen because you know back in the day you'd have to go there physically often it would be gone by the right. time you got there so now it's having this whole other life um but for him to kind of leverage that movement i thought was really interesting and how crazy especially for you as, as somebody who's documenting this like you had to be taken aback in a big way when they decided five points was this giant graffiti complex pretty much it was like it's like a series of buildings and it's here in new york and they're all grouped together but it was famous for many many years for having some of the best street art anywhere in the world yeah you'd go to five points and 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 it was this amazing like exhibit and weeks after the banksy thing ended the people who owned it just painted white all over it and it was almost like simultaneously the Banksy thing is over and every exhibit except for the one with the plexiglass on it is gone and now also this five points thing is gone what what did you think of that as a I guess not so much as a person, but a filmmaker. Yeah. When you saw that was happening, 
I mean, it was sad. I think um, something like five points will can't really probably won't happen again in New right. York. So, um, you know, it, it's a complicated story. Like the backstory is really complicated. But the the building owners were in this legal battle with the local community and a lot of the artists trying to figure out a way to you know the the, the people were trying to figure out a way to save their work mm-hmm. or save it. You know, whether it means turn, you know making it into a museum for street art um, or preserving parts of the building. But uh, ultimately, you know, the building was sold and it is being developed into luxury condos. So it also was sort of like a, it was like a micro version of what's happening all over New York City. I think for a lot of people, this frustration of like, what does it mean when it's no longer affordable for artists to live here? There's no longer right. space for cultural organizations to function. And all you have are luxury condos everywhere. Like, okay, it's great. Like wealthy people can live here, but what are they living here for? Yeah. Now, you, did you grow up in New York? Uh, no. Uh, Connecticut. I, I lived here for about ten years. Okay, so what do you think? As an out, like, like, take the film outside. Just where did you live in in New York? Uh, East Village and Tribeca. So, what do you think of 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 New York right now? Uh, I mean. New York is always changing. Like, I don't, yeah. it's hard to really have. Like, that's I guess my feeling is it's not even about New York. I think its identity is always going to change. Mm-hmm. When I first moved here, New York was over. People are still saying New York is over. Like, it's always going to be the next yeah. generation that's going to look back and say, "Well, it was really happening before." To some extent, I do believe that's somewhat true in terms of like you know at least with art and street culture, like in the seventies and eighties and nineties, like things were ha- were able to happen here that maybe you know people can't really afford to make things happen, or it's a lot more difficult. The challenges are you know. It's more challenging right to, to like get uh something off the ground here um but i think it's happening in all cities in the country i think that what yeah. we're talking about is like if cities don't um uh protect their art communities and like allow for space for that to happen then what you end up with is a city that's entirely retail yeah and, and, but i think that that's kind of symptomatic of the cycle like okay new york became cool and then you're on this you, you got this moment where it's like it's cheap and everybody who lives here is cool and there's art and it's cool right for a second but then once something becomes cool it becomes popular yeah. and then once it becomes popular it becomes expensive and then right. once it's popular and expensive it's not cool anymore and that kind of happens with every cool artistic city i think yeah and that's even like the story of of uh, graffiti and street art to a certain extent mm-hmm. is that like it you know it was something that new yorkers were afraid of and the city was fighting because they associated it with crime and with poverty and with blight so they people were 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 viewed graffiti as a bad thing and then the whole aesthetic of urban living suddenly became co-opted and as gentrification happened that aesthetic became gentrified as well so it was like you'd have uh, luxury condos with you know hiring street artists to, to graffiti their walls to yeah. create this like quote unquote urban aesthetic right you know you, you've got that graffiti uh, style on clothes and backpacks at urban outfitters you know uh-huh. what I mean so it's sort of like you know it gets kind of co opted and, and bought up and then it it's it's meaning changes yeah and it's weird too because that's also like the artist finally gets to a point where they can make some money yeah. But they're not supposed to because they're artists. But you're like, well, no, I, I, I kind of like to make some right, money. Some, some money. <laughs> uh, did you work? How? What was the situation with working with Banksy on this film? You didn't meet him. We didn't work with Banksy. I mean, uh, we didn't meet him, and I don't even know if it's a him. Honestly, after all this time, like people ask me, you know, if you think Banksy's you didn't a woman, even speak on the phone to like, this person. So our only contact was with uh, Pest Control, mm-hmm. uh, Banksy's sort of uh, production company, and uh, and they were they helped us in terms of clarifying facts, giving us certain files to like help you know make the movie work a little bit better. But uh, it was made independently of Banksy, and and that's why we say it's really not about Banksy. I mean, it's kind of about the city, and it's about what yeah. he did, and that sort of puts this frame around around New York. Have you found out if Banksy has seen it or liked it? Yeah, he's seen it. We heard he really enjoyed it. That's you know, good. And we did get some notes from him, so that was cool. <laughs> what, what, what kind of notes did you get? Just from like him? accuracy stuff. But he, you know, he did uh, recommend the opening title track in the. In oh, that's the film. cool. Yeah, that Temple song. So that was his uh, his choice, which I thought was cool. I mean, he, you know, if it didn't work, we wouldn't have used it. But it, yeah. it actually was a really great, yeah. great choice. And it's cool. And it's also yeah, it's also nice to know that it did work. So you're like, okay, he still does kind of have this sort of. I mean, you know, he 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 made a documentary that was nominated for an Academy Award. Do you consider yeah. that a documentary? I actually I I don't really. I mean, I think I think of it as an art project yeah. as well. Because that's it, why when it didn't win Best Documentary, yeah, I was kind of okay with it because I didn't it, it, exit through the gift shop. Of course, it didn't 
because there's so much mystery after it, I was like, well, it probably wasn't a real documentary because it yeah. probably wasn't a real thing at all. Right, exactly. It's it's hard to say. I mean, still nobody knows. Yeah. And so, like, for documentary, I think it's kind of challenging because it's like documentaries are supposed to be about truth. Yes. But that's questionable, too. I mean, documentaries are also stylized and, it, they, you know, they often are taking on a point of view and that point of view is the director's. Um, so, you know, I don't know what a true documentary means. Yeah, it's kind of hard to be completely without an opinion on something and if you are it kind of makes it boring probably yeah i mean and and who's to say really you know whether or not that's the point you right. know i think that i don't know if it's necessary even i think it's about storytelling mm -hmm. and uh you know everybody has a different story so you saw mr brainwash as a did you see it as a banksy creation do you think he is banksy or i don't know if he is banksy i did think of it as a banksy creation uh -huh. it felt like that to me when i was watching the movie um also it's like kind of makes sense considering his other work you know like yeah. even what he did in central park where, where you know where they were he was he had hired an actor to basically set up a uh he set up a, a, a vendor to sell real Banksy's, which signed, is the, authenticated Banksy's. And that's the one that drove everybody nuts. Yeah, because they were selling in Central Park for 60 bucks. <laughs> right. They're worth like two hundred, two hundred fifty thousand dollars $250,000. And um, some people, a couple of people bought them, but most people didn't. Most people walked right by, didn't realize what was going on, just thought they were knockoffs. You've got a few people who were just you know liked the image and bought them and then they now have you know a million dollars worth of original banksies yeah yeah uh opie from from opie's show opie and jim he has a video i don't know if you've seen it where it's what he thinks is banksy getting off the truck with all the stuffed animals oh, in really? new york did we use that video is that one of the clips that we had? i don't think you used it because i didn't see it in the movie yeah but do you think that that could be him, or do you think he wouldn't have traveled with the truck? I don't know. I really don't. It's hard to say. Like the funny thing is, after a year of making this movie, I don't have any more insight <laughs> to like who this person is, right. or what they are. Do you want to know, or do you like the mystery? I don't really care so much anymore. I think there was a moment at the beginning where I I was you know just curious, mm -hmm. but uh, you know after making the movie. It's kind of moved away from being a person, at least in my mind. It's yeah. like he's like a ghost. So it's just like kind of this other ethereal thing. Yeah. It's like watching a scary movie and then at yeah. the end when the monsters reveal, you're like, oh, like, oh yeah. I can you, see you, the, you take the sheet off and it's right. like your I can see the brother. zipper on the back of his yeah. suit. Like, it's not that <laughs> scary at all. Exactly. Um, well, yeah. Well, listen, everybody check out the documentary Banksy Does New York. It's on HBO Monday yep. at 9 p.m. If you haven't seen it, I recommend it. It it, it really is cool, and I, th I find it to be an accurate portrayal of what happened. And I like that you talk to people who loved it, because most people loved it, but you also found the art critics and just the stick-in-the-mud people <laughs> and, and, and the people that had to have a problem with what was going on and just kind of downplayed the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, it's not like it's an accurate description of what everybody felt about it. Yeah. But it seemed like as a whole, New Yorkers were really into it. And, uh, you know, I think it was a love letter to the city. So we kind of treated it like that. And what's great is it answers the question of whatever happened with the styrofoam or rock sphinx head. The sphinx head that got yeah. stolen that was actually intact answers the question of what happened to that. So if you're wondering, yep. it's in there. Uh, thank you so much for being here, Chris. Yeah, thank you. Uh, stay tuned here to Sam Roberts Show on a Friday. Uh, when we get back, do you know who Bobby Lee is? He's a comedian. He's out of his mind. Okay. Always hilarious, though. <laughs> Bobby Lee is scheduled. I can't promise that he'll be here because he also always tries to leave because he he's a very anxious person. Right. Uh, but Bobby Lee is scheduled to be here when we get back. So don't move. Sam Roberts Show continues. And thanks again, Chris McCarble. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right on. More to come on the Sam Roberts Friday Show. Stay there. Sam Roberts Friday Show is back.
He directed the Banksy documentary that's on HBO on Monday. Yeah, I love it. He was in here. And, uh, Getting that art shit out, huh? Who kid, you're back. Oh, you yeah. just you just leave sometimes. Yeah, but, you know, I was out there handling this Eminem thing, and I see Bobby, man. He's, <laughs> he's like, getting horny off of my miso. Nah, man. Well, welcome to the studio. We had Dan Soder in. I met I wanted to meet him. We had, you've never met Dan? No. I Googled him, though. How did it go? He's good. Good. <laughs> How come you sometimes put on the Asian accent a little bit? I do? You just say, oh, he's good, he's good. No, it's just when I go, you know, that's racist, because I just go up a little bit, and it's, ra it's fucking but Asian. But you drop, you drop consonants. You went, he good. No, but I do, what? That's Asian. Did I do it like that? Yeah. yeah you, you Ask like, me again. Okay, how, right. how did the Googling go of Dan Soder? He good. You see? You see what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, I guess you're right. Yeah. It's not racist. No, I, um, I don't know what you're saying, but I love it. Well, Bobby Lee is here. Uh, DJ Who Kid, of course, back from his world. Tour. Where were you, Who Kid? Because uh, we have—I haven't seen you in like four weeks. I was fucking bitches. I was in Dubai, fucking bitches, and I was in Milan, fucking more bitches. God damn! I you didn't fucking. Fuck, you uh, didn't fuck bitches in Dubai. I've been there. No, I fuck bitches. Dude, How? Who, who kid stay? Who kid is in Dubai all the every, time? I feel more my sex stuff. You want to be about moistureless? Yeah, what's moistures? Every bitch that I fuck, I send like thirty to <laughs> thirty to thirty-five people that I text the video of the bitch that I fuck. No. You don't want to? <laughs> no, thank you. Prefer not you, to? you. I don't want okay. to. You gotta send me photos of who you fucking. I only one. Thank you. Oh, really? Yeah, but uh... yeah, that's what I wanted. How come? How come you went in uh, on Obi's show yesterday yeah. and said that the last time you were on the show, because who could you weren't here the last mm -hmm. time Bobby was here, and he was in the middle of a fight with his girlfriend at that time, which by the way they've made up. Oh, and, that's you nice. know, couldn't be more in love. Your girl's hot, by the way. Thank Super you. hot. But he, he walked in it, and... It good. <laughs> she, she's, like, amazing. Like, she's, but she's he, hot. But Bobby walked into Opie's show and said that the appearance on my show last time mm -hmm. almost ended his relationship. Destroy because, destroyed what? it. But destroyed. Then, but you blamed me for it. Yeah. Why? What? Because it's something that you egg me on. <laughs> You know, How, like, it's like if I was in another radio show, I would just not even talk about it. But there's mm. something about your eyebrows or your funny hair that eggs me on. You know? It just makes it makes you tell the truth. Yeah. You know? Well, you came in saying I'm having a fight with my girlfriend, blah, blah, blah. You so look I like asked you're from you the future. It. What do you mean? Like, like Blade Runner style. Yeah. Right? Like Harrison Ford? No. Oh. Like, you remember Daryl Hannah? She had the like, the black like stripe on her eyes. Yeah. Like, oh, you're, you're, her, you you're her sidekick. Like, like the we don't understand right now. You know, the now. guy that like steals like parts from like spacecrafts <laughs> and stuff. She get like a Shiny, like shiny shorts or something. You think so? tight ones? Like super tight. Yeah, that's the future. Right. No, I think but they sell them in American apparel. You look evolved anyway. almost. D evolved. Yeah. Like uh, like in the future, <laughs> but something got messed up along the way. Yeah. Well, you're like your li your upper lip is way too thin for your face. You think so? Yeah. Get that changed. Who kids always said I had a cute mouth. Hell the yeah. bottom's great. Thank you. The bottom lip is amazing. Oh, thank you. Ah, oh, you're good. Oh. See, I tell you, but, I told um, you. Yeah. There she is. Look at that mouth. Yeah, but that's just a picture of Daryl Hannah. Yeah, <laughs> that, that doesn't help us with anything. So did you, when you were in Dubai, did you have sex with this, like strangers, or were they no, prostitutes and stuff? No, I don't want to look at the photos, please. Thank you. No, uh, uh, it was. Why, not, why don't you want to see the photos? I don't see his penis. Sure. No, but no, he no, doesn't no. show his penis. No, oh, well, then he makes, uh, yes, then thank you. Yeah, yeah. He I makes just... the girls do things. Like last time he was in here, he had a, a video of two girls, one on top of the other. <laughs> Clapping their vaginas together, and he called yeah, it the pancake. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I've been to Dubai, and that's what they look like. They look see. like ninjas. Okay, yeah, that's, that's like ninjas just, and stuff. Yeah, that's just that. Yeah, like, yeah. She's in my hotel room. Everything's I, I, covered. I, I got yeah. the naked pics too. I can I show him show him the pancake, who kid? You know what I'm talking about? I got the video too. Yeah, the video of the two vaginas slapping each other. I, I, I wish I, I could I tell a, you on I social a, media. I, where I you have a see it, I have a Beirut prostitute story. What is it? What happened? Well, I'll tell you later. But I want to look at the photo first. Okay, this is a. Yeah, but that could be anybody. No, okay, well, show, show Bobby the video. Let me look at, the, let me look at it. I play hip-hop, too. <laughs> yeah, you're playing oh. some... Oh, Jesus. Bobby got out sight. I think his election knocked the phone over. Bobby's boner... What do you think, Bobby? Oh, what man. Do you, what do you see? I, love I, I do a lot of weird stuff. Explain to me what's in the video. I, I can't it's, see it from you here. You see cheeks and a vagina, and, and she's, like, touching her... But cheeks with her hands and stuff. But I told, I told her I was a medical nigga. I graduated from yeah. the, the hood of uh, but you, you, medicine. You, you wrap yourself up and stuff when you do it? Yeah, of course. You okay. use a condom? Yeah, you I, don't, have to. I don't want any bullets. So you use a condom when you're like with a prostitute in Beirut? I haven't done it in a long time, that kind of lifestyle. Well, because you're in a committed relationship with yeah, a girlfriend. Yeah, but in a long time I haven't done that kind of lifestyle. But you know? back then? Well, that was only like three or four years ago, yes, I did it okay, once so in Beirut. it wasn't that long ago at all. 
No. I did a tour in Dubai and uh, Abu Dhabi and all those places and stuff. Please yeah. tell me this, because I tell Sam this all the time. Yeah. But he don't want to believe me. No. Girls that do not want to lose their virginity allow you to fuck them in their ass. Yeah. Is that and true? You, yeah, yep. for sure. Because yeah. that's like, I've, I've always heard that as a joke. No. No, no, no. It's real. Like girls who it's against their religion. And also in that culture, it's like if you're a guy and mm -hmm. you're having sex with another guy and you're on top, that's not considered gay. So yeah. if you're the one inserting. That's true too. Yeah. So, I'm, def just so I'm definitely gay because I'm a bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always at the bottom in those okay, situations. Bob, it's okay to be gay. Man. I'm always at the bottom in those situations. Yeah. You know, because they tend to come up. Well, I, I always ask, can I be on top this time? Like, no. <laughs> I close your eyes. Yeah. Okay. And face the wall. Oh, okay, yeah, put, nice. Put it out there, there's nothing yeah. wrong with being gay, Sam. Nothing wrong at all, Bobby. Nothing there at all. There isn't totally nothing wrong with it. But, mm. unless you're being forced to be gay, in which case, I have a problem with that. People who are forced yeah, to be gay. Yeah, it was just a joke. I really never did that, Sam. Thank God. Thank yeah. God. So tell me, about, tell me about Beirut. Beirut. Uh, Beirut. Be Be oh my God, that's fresh. What's what's who controlling you now? Two 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 booties now. That's the pancake. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Two vaginas clapping against it. each other. I love it, dude. This just exists in Who Kid's world. It's just like what? where we have lunch. <laughs> yeah. Who Kid has dozens of women. I did a tour in the Middle East, and there's like for a month, and there's no porn. Uh -huh. You can like they block your. Porn from the internet, about that right? Place. Yeah, I try to get on Reality Kings because that's the spy side I go to. <laughs> you like that? Because I pay for it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you pay. I need for high def. I need high def. So you can't go to Red Tube. No, no, or no, 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 no. Hell no. I, all... I don't like it fuzzy. I like it when it's high. I have to see the freckles. I have to oh. see the the lips. Everything. High def. A HD dog. I think you might be the last person on the planet still paying for porn on the yeah, internet. That's it right there. That's it. Yeah, but it, but we're not paying for it here. We can look at preview videos. Uh, yeah, I don't do that. I do the full thing. How long have you been paying for it? For years. That's my site. And you just I keep... don't own it, but that's where I go. That's, your, that's, your, that's <laughs> yeah. just your spot. Yeah. So, so, you so go they to... block all that, right? You can't go to Reality Kings when you're in the Middle East. No, you can't. And then you have to imagine while you're master. I can't do that. I have, I have no imagination. <laughs> well, it's gone at this point. Who can... Who could jerk off nowadays just using their mind? The porn is too easy to get to. Everybody's mm. seen too much porn to do yeah, that. Yeah, I just can't do it. I yeah. haven't done it since I was a kid. And even kids now have so much access to porn, there's no way that they would have to use their imagination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, but I don't, don't have an imagination, I don't think. But you're one of the most imaginative, magical people I know. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I couldn't jerk off at all. <laughs> I couldn't jerk off at all, so then when we went to Beirut, I went to my friend... I guess to say his name because he didn't do nothing wrong. His okay. name is Camille. <laughs> Camille? Right? Yeah. It's a boy's name? Yeah, it's a boy, and he has a he has an Uzi on him all the time. Then good for him. That's yeah. a great because name. He's That's kind of a, a part of name. he's kind of a part of Hezbollah's. He is kind of. And you hang out <laughs> with him? Well, no, he's not my bestie. What's wrong with that, Sam? Well, I mean, there is Hezbollah is not. Well, go on. <laughs> Anyway, I go, hey, the first thing I say to him is, hey, Camille, I need to get um, porn or I need to get, um, I need to get around, you know, I need to, f I need to fuck. Right. I need, I need that's something, what I, say. I can either put my, my penis in or something I can rub my penis to. Yeah. And he goes, oh, don't, don't worry, um, we'll go to a super disco. <laughs> What's super disco? That's exactly what I said. <laughs> yeah. I go, that sounds fantastic. Where is that, right? That and it's right, an hour know. outside of Beirut, mm -hmm. super discos, right? Mm -hmm. There's like five hotels, yeah. and on top it says super disco, mm -hmm. right? You, you know about, about that? Have you been to super disco? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, super disco. So you don't know, I, you're like me, we don't know what super disco is. Either, at the time, I didn't know exactly. either. And at the time, I can't say the name, and don't. if you ask a million times, I'm not going to say <laughs> So I'm going to say something, but you're going to ask, you're going to ask a million times. I'm not going to say nothing. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. So there was a TV star with us too. Okay. Who was I'm the TV? I'm not going to tell you. I know. <laughs> big, very big TV star. Yeah. Bruce Willis from no. Moonlighting. No. Okay. Moonlighting. So he said, and it was three or four years ago. <laughs> it was Neil Patrick Harris. No. Go on. <laughs> So, so then, then, NPH so then I, I go, Camille, can we go tomorrow? And he goes, yeah. And then the TV star came with us. But he didn't do anything. And he goes, guys. He just wanted to go to see what it looked like. Who remembers Doogie Howser? Sure. That's not him. Oh, it wasn't Neil yeah. Patrick well, he, it, it wasn't a, a homosexual. It was not. No, it was a heterosexual. Okay. A heterosexual yeah. man who's a TV star. Mm -hmm. So Ross from Friends. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, um... <laughs> So we drive out there, right? It's an hour, and it's like we have to go up all these checkpoints with like tanks and stuff. Yeah, you kids with machine guns. It's very scary. I would imagine. And we go there, and we went to a super disco, and um, it's like in a dungeon. It's like you go to this hotel, and on the bottom is a nightclub, but it's really a dungeon, and it's a bunch of like girls just walk, like you know, from Europe, and all these people just walking in circles. It's really sad. Is it like a is it like a sexual dungeon or a dungeon where the girls are trapped? What's put? No, it's not. They're not trapped or handcuffed, but it's like it's like not a nightclub either. Right. They're not there to like dance. Right. You're they're there to work. Right. And probably not of their choice. 
Well, yeah, it's their choice. Well, they all see, you said they're all bummed out. Well, walking yeah. around in circles. So would probably, you be if you're like walking around and you know your hoochie's going to get all jacked up and stuff? I probably wouldn't make that choice. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Exactly. Either would I, but we're not them. And we don't know their life circumstances. No, you're right, Bobby. All right? I'm not in their shoes. No, you're right. If I grew up in East Europe, my parents were abandoned. <laughs> I was abandoned by them or something. And then, but what if it was like the girl in Taken? Oh, yeah. She was just Liam Neeson's daughter. Yeah, but I didn't. that movie wasn't out when I... Okay, so you don't it. know for sure. So I didn't know. If okay. I watched the movie, then I wouldn't have done it. Okay, that's fair. Okay, okay. Morally, I have no problem then. Okay, good. Good. So I go, <laughs> yeah, I and I look, and they look so sad that I, <laughs> I said to Camille, I go, and the other guy, I go, I, I can't do it. I just can't morally can't do it. Because they don't look happy. Not only they're like happy, they look like Twilight vampires. Right. You know what I mean? Like, like these are white, women. White and like ghoulish like penises have beaten the souls mm -hmm. out of these women arab yeah. penises too arab penises have beaten yeah. these women's souls out of their bodies yeah and he's right because they're russian or albanian yeah. or it's like the sex the sex trade they send on all the europeans yeah to anywhere beirut abu dhabi whatever huh. mm -hmm. and these arab dudes who are millionaires they fuck them yeah yeah and americans too and we, television you know, stars like bobby lee and his friend and his friend also they, they do weird about. things like put ieds in their vaginas and stuff you <laughs> know? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, you can't yeah. trust it like little tiny IEDs that's that just terrible. blow it out a little bit. You <laughs> yeah. Know? yeah, just get a penis burn. Yeah, yeah. The, the only thing that's good they give you like watermelon when it's over. They, they do? do give you watermelon, which is well, delicious. Well, <laughs> it's thank you. Great. It's refreshing. Thank you. <laughs> Let's not rush to the uh, to the refresh. That's when yeah. they cleanse the. And pie. you're black, so yeah. well, wow. And, uh, you know, yeah. and for once they didn't feel <laughs> yeah. racist. Yeah. So, like, I felt like I was being respected. Right, but you were embracing a stereotype, which is fine. I love it. Yeah. Um, okay, so you say I don't think so I can I, do I, this. Let's get out of here. I can't do it. And, they're like, <laughs> and then Camille goes, "Well, you haven't met Julia." I'm a Julia. No, he goes. You, what? Is that what you just said? I see. He goes. You, I go. Let's leave. And he goes. You haven't met Julia. Oh, you haven't <laughs> met Julia. Yeah. It sounded like you said you have a Julia. No, yeah, or yeah. yeah. Let's go to Orange Julius. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're like okay. I'm just as happy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, <laughs> so then he goes. He disappears from the table, uh -huh. and he brings back this Moroccan girl. Okay. And she looked like a brown Julia Roberts. She was so beautiful. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Tasty. I think that's why her name was Julia because she looks just like her. Mm. And do you get to see these women nude, or are they in clothes? She was completely clothed okay. and i go and i looked at camille i go let's do it now <laughs> i found the I, one. this is the one now did the girl did julia did she look like her soul had been penis beaten out of her or was she a little happier she was uh kind of be honest i said kind of kind of happy kind of happy but i don't know what, what her feelings are like at the time because you don't know her life story no okay and that's not for you to judge no i don't want to know no 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 because <laughs> <laughs> if i know then i don't want to do it right you know what I mean? She was beaten and all that stuff. You know what I mean? He's just a nice guy. He, he so Maya, she's it. a Christian yeah. and she just you know, got lost. And you're in that moment <laughs> yeah. where you can, nice you can believe this to be true in that second. So you're like, we have to do this right now. Yeah, yeah. But then you know what Camille says? What? Oh, you can't do it now. Why? I, that's what I said. I go, why? <laughs> and he goes, you have to take her on a date. What? Yes. Why would you go to Super Disco because to take Because some... that's where they are, and then that's illegal yeah. to like do it right then and there because they get in trouble. In other, in other words, you get a drink and you take. A no, 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 no. That's not even that. Oh, you gotta go. I have to do it tomorrow. What? Wait, wait, wait! You have to book in advance. Yes. <laughs> Damn, yeah. I, did, I did everything in that day. Maybe yeah. because I'm a celebrity a DJ or something. Well, I, I want to hear oh, your yeah. story next, nice, yeah. for sure. Yeah, that's but, not happened to me. Okay, so you? They say no. We want to go by the book here. So you have to pick a girl and then. What? No, give your Julia's phone the one. Julia's the one you've picked her. Yeah. And then what? What then I'm going to tell you. I know, but that's what I'm asking you yeah, right so now. Yeah, so then we leave and I'm bummed. And I go, I don't want to come back here, you know? Wait, wait, wait. Just you... listen to the story. But why would you have to... Did you give her your phone number or something? No, no, no. He said, come back. He worked it out with this guy named Johnny. Mm-hmm. And he goes... <laughs> probably his real name, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he goes, uh, Johnny is, he says to come here tomorrow. <laughs> At 1, and you can take her on the date. At 1 p.m.? Yeah, during the day. It was really sad. That's really sad. Well, it gets worse. Okay. I'll tell you what happened. Yes. So then then, so then so he goes, he writes down on a piece of paper. <laughs> he writes down on a piece of paper. When you come here tomorrow at 1, mm -hmm. you have to say these three things. Okay? Julia, mm -hmm. room 306, <laughs> right? Johnny said it was okay. Okay. He had to write those things in that order. <laughs> because you can't screw it up. You can't fuck it up. Right. Right. So I have the piece of paper now. And I like that the secret code name yeah. is Johnny. <laughs> I know, I know. So then I go, all right, I put it in my pocket. And the next day I wake up, it's like noon or something or 1130. I go, okay, let's go, Camille. 
And he goes, no, you're going by yourself. What? Yes. Get the fuck so you got to be here. petrified. Yeah, I'm petrified. So I go, I'm not doing it. You don't I even like to go into radio studios no, by yourself. I, I don't even be right here right now. No. I told Adrian, I go, can you just be as late as you can because I don't want to do it. <laughs> you t- did he tell you that, Adrian? <laughs> he said, yeah, yeah, that's true. Exactly. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. exact words. Yeah, I said, just slow down. <laughs> go around the block. Yeah, go around time. the block. Yeah, I don't want to yeah. do radio today. I don't want to do radio today. Okay. But I'm here because I love you. Well, you're such a, like, a loving guy. <laughs> I love you. Thank you so much. He's a nice guy, man. He's hey, wonderful. I love you, too. Oh, man, I know. That was sexual the way you said it to Okay, so now you have to go without Camille. So I'm in a cab. Back to Super Disco. Yeah. At 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. That's creepy. What gets crazier? Tell me. So I'm in a cab, and the cab driver, right, is talking to me about his life. And he goes, <laughs> oh, he goes, you from, you from L.A.? I go, yeah. And he goes, you a lot of Jews there? A lot of Jews? It's Jews, yeah. Uh. I go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, oh, I hate them. What? I go, what? That's exactly what I said. Yeah. I go, what? The, can I be all rep me. Yeah. yeah, everyone I work in business with is Jewish, right. you know? They've given me all the jobs that they I They smell funny, but, you know, aside you, from that. You look past it. <laughs> yeah. And then he showed me a, a tattoo on the stomach of Hitler. I'm not even kidding. What? And yeah. what ethnicity was this guy? I don't know, brown. He was a brown person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hitler probably, didn't like brown people probably, either, though. He's probably Arabic. I don't know what it was. Did Hitler like Arabic people? I don't think so. No. I don't know. I just said, can you put your shirt back, back down? I was like really panicked. <laughs> you did. Hey, put it down. Put it down. Yeah, yeah. Because now, let's paint a picture. Yeah, yeah. You're in a cab on your way to Super Disco yeah. without Camille, your mm, Uzi no friend, yeah. by yourself yeah. in the middle of Bahrain. No. Oh, Beirut. 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 Yeah. At one o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. And your cab driver has his shirt up past his nipples mm. and has a Hitler tattoo on his belly. Yes. That's wow. crazy. It's insane. It's sanity. That's yeah. A, that's a movie right It's there. a movie right it's there. It's a movie. Yeah. yeah. So I go, put it down, please. And then I just never, <laughs> I, I didn't even respond to him. Right. I just, we just kind of drove out there. What's wrong? What's wrong? Okay. I'm panicking. No, no, no. There's something that you looked at the screen. What's wrong? You got to say No, I just, I was reading the, the phone calls oh. just so I knew. All right. So, um, <laughs> so I show up there, right? Yeah. And the cab just drops me off. Right now I'm in, it's like a desert, but like these gigantic buildings that see super disco. It's really weird. (laughs) And I walk in and the first thing I see to my right is a long table, wooden table with six Russian guys with tattoos to their wrists. They have guns that, you know, the, 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 the guns on their outside of their body with the oh, strap, strap, up, yeah. strap, yeah. strap yeah. holsters. Yeah, yeah. two yeah. guns yeah. on their body mm-hmm. that you can just see. Yeah, and they're drinking Turkish coffee. I don't know what kind of coffee it was. I just assume it's Turkish coffee. Probably Turkish. Yeah, because it was like in the small little cups. Like espresso? Nah. Whatever. whatever. The metallic, yeah, the I metallic don't know. cups. It could have been metallic. It could have been Starbucks pressed or something. You, <laughs> you know, don't know yeah, for yeah, sure. I don't know you what didn't drink it. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I didn't drink it, right? And as soon as, I, it's like in a movie, I walk in and they literally freeze. And they just stare at me. Oh right, God. and literally, like you, I just you could hear my heartbeat out loud. Right, you know what I mean? Like I'm scared, I'm sweating, uh-huh. right? And I'm like, I can't, I don't want to do, I don't want to be here, right? I don't, I don't want to do it. <laughs> like you don't even love Julia anymore. No, I hate Julia. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I hate the whole thing. Right. I want to go home. Right. I want to go to L.A. Right. Right. Where the Jews are. Where the Jews are. Yeah, yeah. So I have the piece of paper in my hand. Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> no, piece of paper. At this right. point, you forgot. I can't what memorize said. it. Yeah. I can't memorize it. That's how scared I am. Right. And I go up to the um the front desk. Yeah. Right. And there's like a curtain there. Right, and out of the curtain comes a guy three times bigger than the Russians, but Russian. What? And he's got like a goatee, tattoos on his neck. I can't. I don't know what if they were. They were like tribally, you know. Sure. He goes, "What do you want?" <gasps> That's what he says to me. Uh, I go, "Um, room three oh six, Julia. Johnny said it was okay." You know what he says to me? What? Who's Johnny? No. That's what he says. Over. Who's Johnny? And at this point, you just got to be, I'm just going to shit my pants and leave. I did shit in my pants. You did? Yeah. Not really. <laughs> but like metaphorically. Metaphorically, I did, right? Figuratively. So I, go, I don't know who he is. I'm leaving. Bye. <laughs> and I turned around and I ran out of there. Did you do it with your arms by your side or moving your arms back and forth? I don't remember how I was running, because Sam? No, because last time you left the studio, you did it with your arms by your side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I looked, don't know how I was running. That's probably weird. Yeah, it was weird. Yeah. It was weird. <laughs> So then I'm outside. Now I have this like phone that all you know that he had given me, Camille, like all these international like Beirut phones, right? Yeah. So I called him, and I go, I'm, 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 I need to go home. <laughs> he goes, Well, how was it? I mean, you, there's no way you could have done it by now. I go, I'm not, I don't. He, he did, there's no Johnny. <laughs> there's no, J- Camille. There is no fucking Johnny. They don't know who he is. Yeah, they don't know who he is. He's like, you got to go back in there. What? I go, oh, no. <laughs> I'm, not going, I'm not going back in there. There's no way. I'm gonna go back in there. 
Right. Right. Why because would you? have you? to go in there. Uh -huh. Johnny's my friend. You got to go back in there. But they said, who's Johnny? I know. He goes, there's a Johnny. I go, there's no Johnny. He goes, there's a Johnny. <laughs> who's so Johnny? I go back in there. I go back in there. <laughs> After like 20 minutes of crying, I go back in there. Is your face all red from crying? What? Was your face all red from crying? I don't crying? remember. What I, I, there was no mirror. I don't know. But probably. <laughs> Maybe. It's even weirder. Maybe, Sam. Go on. So I walk in. He, st he didn't go. He was still behind the counter, the guy. Mm -hmm. Right? Six guys still on the side, the wooden tables. Mm -hmm. Right? And they're all just staring at me. I'm shaking even harder. Mm -hmm. I walk up to the table and I go, Hi. I go, Hi. <laughs> I'm back. Room 306. <laughs> Like, like, that's why I was said it. Like, you were whispering. whispering. Yeah, whispering. I was so scared. Yeah. I go, I'm doing a second, Julia. Johnny said it was okay. <laughs> you know what the guy says? What? I'm Johnny! <laughs> oh, my God. He was Johnny the whole time! <laughs> he, was, he, was he was fucking with you. He was fucking with me. Was fucking with me. <laughs> then the six guys at the side start laughing. <laughs> it's just a little Hysterically. <laughs> Hysterically, right? What was your reaction? I laughed nervously. Yeah. <laughs> I go, <laughs> good one. That's a good one. <laughs> like that. Just scared out of your mind. Yeah. So then, so so then, uh, I, they gave me two things. They gave me a room key, right, to wow. 306, and a remote control for the air conditioning, which is weird. Just so you can have it to be so whatever you want. So I could just want. relax. But I think it was a date. Well, that's what it's not really a date. Like you have to just go up there. Oh, that's, you have to just make a date. Yeah, and then you sleep yeah, with yeah, yeah. So I go upstairs to 306. She's literally 45 minutes late. I have no idea. I'm just sitting there wow. in a brown, like it looked like the early 70s decor. Just really, it, you know how the, you know, the just, it's awful. It's thick. The air, the air is, is thick. thick. Yeah, even no matter how much I turn the air conditioning. Right. It's thick and it's not right. It's not like, it's not like 70s decor. Like it's fun. It's like, no, oh, no, 70, no. It's like, no, no, it's like sad 70s right. decor. Like it's from the 70s. Like Wonderland, that movie. Yes. For some reason. Or like uh, Boogie Nights. <laughs> oh, yeah. But you know like I mean? it's been there since Boogie Nights. Yeah, era. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why but, it's called uh, Super uh, Disco. Man, imagine thousands of people sweating and then it goes in the curtains, the bed. Sweating yeah. and coming. Uh, more, uh, more so sweating. You think there's a lot of sweat? Well, I don't know. Coming too. Because yeah, because people come. Because I come like a mist. You do? Yeah. Yeah. Just goes, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, like that. That's cool. That's some new shit. Yeah, it's like banaka. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't come in a thick thing. It's like a spray. Mark. Like a spray. That's yeah, cool. Yeah. So, so then I get a knock sorry. on the door, and there she is, Julia. Forty-five minutes late. Ah! Doesn't matter. She looks beautiful. And are you in your clothes? Yeah. You can't just you know answer the door naked. That's weird. Okay. Yeah. You because know I mean? also I, I'm at the point where I don't even really want to do it. No. Like I want to get out of there. You know what I mean? The cab ride turned you off, and yeah. the Johnny yeah. game was. What not... I wanted to do was go. Hey, just lay on the bed, get naked. And I'll just jerk off on the side of the bed like a weirdo. You know? Right. Yeah, yeah. Because all you all this <laughs> this whole process, all you wanted to do was jerk off to fucking street exactly, kings. Exactly, dude. If that's I could it. just get to Reality Kings, that's fine. Reality Kings. That would suffice. Now you're you're twelve hours removed from mm. Reality Kings. Yeah. And you're waiting for Julia, and she gets there 45 minutes later. Yeah. And then what happens? So then she, we sit there and watch TV for like 20 minutes. I swear to God. I fucking hate We saw like a, an Arab MTV. It was amazing. What'd you say? I hate Sam. Sam's going to get you in trouble again, man. No, no. Not like in truth. This is a, truth, this is a documented story right okay, here. Right. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I feel bad. I, am I a bad person? You're a good person. No, Great. I just don't you know You know why, why you're a good person? Uh, because the these minute... are things that I should just keep to myself and no, just like, not. let it go. This is, this is life experiences. And the reason you do things like this is to gain that life experience and to share that with the world. You're a comedian. Well, I just also decided just not, I don't care anymore, really, what people think. Good. Anyway. You know what's crazy? When he was sitting there waiting. Yeah. Like, what was it, 40 minutes at least? Yeah. So I think that's when your dick talks to you. What did your dick tell you? Oh, it doesn't talk, but um, yeah. if it did, it would probably go, I'm like how, I, how my body was feeling. It's the same thing. I'm scared. Right. So it was, I'm scared, right? Go home. Yeah. Not even, not even back to Beirut. Go home. This is your penis talking yeah, to you. Yeah, to LA. Go back to LA. People, right? People think this is a joke. Like, you think with your dick when you maybe are going to get pussy or not getting pussy. And you know it's bad when you're in such a bad situation that your penis is panicking. Yeah. That's when you know you're in trouble. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I've really never thought of it that way, but I guess. Yeah. You gotta think with your dick. I mean, your dick tells you what. My to dick do. is like my arm. It's like a part uh, of my body. I don't know what you're thinking. What are you thought? I you? don't. I don't know what he's talking about either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your dick gives you approval to go ahead and do it. No, it's you, just an. It's just an that's organ. Your brain, no, or I don't know. I'm not a scientist or nothing. But... Well, I'm a medical nigga. You know what I'm saying? So I think oh, the dick tells. Please don't say the n word. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> 
Don't worry about so it. So anyway, <laughs> Julia's yeah, there. Cool, right, who kid? Yeah, he's, he's my nigga. Okay, good. Yeah, so we're watching, like, um, Arab MTV. <laughs> You're just watching TV together? Yeah, I don't know what the kids. She doesn't really speak English, so I don't know. I don't, just think, what do you want to watch? What are you supposed to say? <laughs> right. Fuck. It was just on, you know? Yeah. That's why you should have answered the door naked. Yeah, and then she starts kissing me. <laughs> Where? On my mouth. Just right away on the mouth? Yeah. Not on the neck first? No, dude. The straight up, that's not me. <laughs> I hope not. That's what, I, yeah, that's, what, that's what my penis felt like, yes. <laughs> Just quivering in a so corner then get somewhere. This, get the, this, she, then she, she has a, a little bag, and she pulls out like like a strip of condoms. Yeah. And puts it on the nightstand, right? How, like a dozen? Yeah, like a dozen. That's weird. I, exactly. It's yeah. weird, right? Yeah. But no. Well, let me finish the story. Okay. <laughs> so I'm laying in the bed, and like, I probably, because I haven't masturbated in a month. A month? Why a month? Because I was in the Middle Shit. East before that. And I couldn't masturbate. For the I have whole no month? Yeah. God damn. Yeah. So this is backed up. You know so you have, and no nocturnal emissions? I don't know. what. I, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Sometimes that happens. A month. Whew. It's a long time. So then um, we do it. And it lasts, I'm not kidding, probably 12 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I like stuck the condom on and I did it. And then I went, uh, And then I, I got up from the bed. I'm like, hey, we're done, you know. Yeah, that was that. She goes, no, like, <gasps> no. You, it, like, it broke as broken as you can. She said, you stay here four hour. Yeah, I have to stay there for four hours. Four hours, yeah. not for an hour. No, four hours. And I, now I'm thinking, what am I going to do for the next four hours? Watch Arab MTV? Like, this is the worst. Because <laughs> you already yeah, came. Arab yeah, MTV. but you know what she said? <laughs> what? Sex all the time for, for you can have sex with yeah. her multiple. as many, multiple times mm -hmm. for two hundred dollars. Yep. <laughs> wow. You're not even lying. I'm not lying. So it's just for the time. Mm -hmm. It's time, right? In America, they're lazy. Yeah. Because they go, well, no, you claim like, five hundred in Vegas, six hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and we're done. And once you come, not it's in over. the Middle East. No, they have you, good work ethic out there. You get your time. And in America, don't you only get an hour? Yeah, and it's also a bad hour. Right. Yeah. yeah. Because they want to hurry up and get. They want to hurry up and get out. No, this is because they want to because they want to try to sneak two clients into one hour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This one, no, she's dedicated to her job. That's Julia. Julia, yeah. I probably had sex with her 30 times. I mean, I don't really? even remember. Yeah. I think we ran out of condoms. Wow. Yeah. I was just, it was like a, yeah. A How do you reload of that? Okay. Yeah, like, can you guy. usually reload that quickly? I, I, when you haven't done it in that's that long, was, right? Yeah. That's what it was. It's if it was up, now, so. no, I'd be like, no, I'm leaving. Right. Mm -hmm. Now you have Banaka come. Yeah. But then it was like a thick. Oh, fluid. by then so it, it was, was like just a drop came out. Right. Like by the ninth time. Yeah. It went, uh, and then, bloop. but I mean, that first one, after a month, it was like Elmer's glue. Like it was, it was like a marshmallow. Strong. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Like a full blown <laughs> marshmallow came out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it was like uh, wood glue. You know, wood yeah. glue? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like Stay, yellow. Yeah. yeah. You could tape things to the wall. Yeah, I mean, stick things on. Anyway. Um, so after like, how long was it before you got comfortable in that room? Was it the, the first time you came? You're like, oh, okay, I kind of like where well, this is going. Well, you accept your circumstances. <laughs> yeah. Once you accept your circumstances, things are fine. I shouldn't have told that story anyway. Why not? I don't know. I never told it before. I, just, I, I, I don't know. I know. That's why I was trying to warn you. This guy said I was going to ruin your fucking sex life. I already, right? I'm, no, because my Kalila already knows about it. I would, oh, yeah. I would hope so. My I parents mean, know. They oh, do? Wow. Yeah, my parents How know. How do you tell your parents something like that? They don't that? care at this point. Did you do that? Have you done that story on stage? No, I've told them my parents that story. Just that as a story? Yeah. That's crazy. My why? Dad, afterwards, my dad doesn't even laugh. He goes, well, wrong with you. <laughs> That's what he said. What's wrong with you? Well, why do you tell your parents that story? I tell my parents everything. Just because? Well, I think for the longest time they thought I was gay. Mm. <laughs> so anytime you have sex with a woman, no, you're like, they're just happy that I'm not. Right. Because I, it, they would rather you go through that experience than be gay. Oh yeah. That's like next level homophobia. Wow. Oh yeah. Well, they're old school Korean, traditional Korean parents. Right. Mm. And they, um, like, cause between the ages of when I moved out mm -hmm. to age 24, mm -hmm. <laughs> not one girl. Why not? Because I was unfuckable. Oh, that's, that's gonna, why. That's gonna do it to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was unfuckable, and so <laughs> they, in, but in their heads, they're like, "Are you gay?" Mm. You know what I mean? But no, you gave me the genetics, genetics to look like this. Right. Like you don't understand. So know. this is like your fault. Yeah, guys, girls, none of them yeah, want to You look to like fuck mythological me. creatures. <laughs> like, Dad, you look like Yoda. And my mom looks like Gollum. Oh, that's gross. And you gross. think you're going to get, like, Tom Cruise? No. <laughs> don't talk about his parents like that. Yeah, well, how I mean, dare you? I'm, I apologize. For, yeah. Was it that difficult for you, who kid? You went to Super Disco? Yeah, I, it wasn't all that. Because yeah. I, I had to leave the next day. So I had to DJ in the evening. So they, they set it up, like, everything to... 
I saw like the Russians there, but I, I fuck, I picked somebody mm -hmm. and I fucked like right there. And then how many, did you just fuck the one time though? I fucked her twice. But, twice and, and then, then I, go. I had to go DJ. <laughs> right. I, I didn't yeah. do the full well, maybe, maybe four you, hours. Maybe yeah. you, you, you didn't know Camille. I had a shitty hookup maybe. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't sound like a shitty hookup. You got four hours worth of fucking from Julia, who's yeah, the top girl there. That's true. And I don't think she was the top girl. For you. She was just the one that didn't look like she was an albino. Right, I see. <laughs> yeah, the other ones look like, like I said, Twilight Vampires. They look like, like they had no blood in their body. Yeah, right. But, but you know what just they come. do? Your Bobby may attest to this. They lick asshole. What? <laughs> <laughs> Did she lick your asshole, Bobby? No. <laughs> Did you want her to? Yeah, Korea. Uh, you, an abomination. I went to Korea before. I got my ass <laughs> licked there, too. That's, you have, I'm not a heathen. You have manners. Yeah. You have morals. Well, you, you had to eat your butthole? I mean, I, I was like, you know, I had my legs spread because she yeah. gave me head. And then I just put I don't my know, shit maybe because you're a big more. guy and they're like, I don't yeah. want to die, so let's do it. You know what I mean? But for me, oh, I, I can't even. Scared. I really wanted her to lick, like, the space between the balls and the asshole. The, but the then, taint. The taint, yeah. yeah. But then she went a little lower. I call it no man's land, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's whatever. Yeah. She went a little lower. I was like, oh. I did that in Bangkok, Thailand, but yeah. that's like. What, a part... had your taint licked? Yeah, but that's a part of the package. Yeah. What taint licking is? Well, that's a part of the curriculum. Can you say curriculum? You can if you want. Yeah, yeah. Serious XM, so. Yeah, sure. I'm in Thailand. Part of the program that they do that. Yeah. Say so, the prostitution program. Well, I or went there with two. I went there with two movie executives from Korea. Mm -hmm. I was shooting a movie there. Okay. And afterwards, I went to them and I go, um, "Did they eat your butthole?" They go, "Yeah, yeah, 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 yeah." And I go, "Do they always eat your butthole?" And they go, "Yeah, yeah, 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 yeah." yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I go, "Oh, okay, okay. yeah." I got my butt eaten there too. You did. Yeah, Jesus, Bangkok. you're a really and, uh, worldly dude. I don't request it. You you request. I don't. I don't know that that's a thing. But I don't. I don't request it. But I think when you do that movement where you raise your butt up and you yeah. want them to lick that space, they'll yeah. do it. They're assuming that you want butthole. But I just want that space but licked. There's no, there's no nerve endings in your tail. Why would you want? There. I have a nerve there for some reason. Well, Maybe it's a black mutant? thing. It might Maybe be a black, it's a black thing. thing. Yeah. When I was young, I used to like finger like play with it with oil. With your taint, you used to oil your taint as a young man. Yeah, it felt Can good. I ask you about this statistic? <laughs> Yeah. Um, did you know that one out of every two African American males have had a gay experience? Is that right? Yeah. Where'd you read that? It's in the. It's on the net. <laughs> Literature? No, it's like a. It's a thing. I mean, he's right, but it didn't happen to me yet. But it will. No, let me ask. Look, <laughs> yeah, statistics well, say, one right? One out of two. Let me. Fifty percent. Let me look, look. Is that because of prison? I mean, I've been no, in no, Thailand. Look, look at me right now. <laughs> look, look at me right now, dude. Yeah. Yeah, you did. Uh. You did, man. I mean, nice. It's yeah. all right. No, you did. I'll accept the fact that it's, it's it will fine, happen. It's fine, dude. Just let it go. Let's let it, let it go. <laughs> let it go. Yeah, yeah. Just let it go and yeah. live and learn and move it's on. Right, man. It. I did the same thing, man. It's okay to be gay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not even black. <laughs> out of all the bitches I fuck, like, I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I, I told Sam this, like, out of all the bitches I fuck, yeah. how, how am I supposed to know that a thousand bitches were bitches? Or women. So you're oh, saying, what? out of all the women that you've had sex with, w there could have been one or more trans individuals. How would I know? I know because I have eyes. Yep. And hands. But and in hands, a, in yeah. a club and you're drunk and you think this is a girl and you just get head because you it was an incredible night. Uh, you don't leave her. Well, then you have. Yeah. For sure. For sure, right? Yeah, 100%. But I'm not gay. I just had but a you could see I'm not, did, did I say that? It was no. A good, it was a good, I'm not accusing you of nothing, dog. Bobby, it was like a good mouth. All he's talking about is statistics. Yeah. yeah. I, I accept it. You accept it, right? That's, I'm, I'm a nigga. It's 2014, for God's sake. Let's go to uh, Colin in New Jersey. Colin, welcome to Sam Roberts' show. <laughs> hey, fellas. How are you? Good, pal. Hey, hey, Bobby. I'm a, I'm a huge fan, man. Thank I you. Say, having you on the show... Uh, it, even though I miss Mr. Kumia, you are by far the, the one of the best replacements they've they've had on the show. So. Anthony, gotta, oh, I love him. Yeah, he's great. Thank you so you got, much. You gotta, you gotta keep telling fucking gross stories, though. I don't even know what you're saying. <laughs> I don't think they're, they're gross. They're just life experiences. Just life experiences. Just inviting people to a side that maybe they haven't experienced before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, well, you, well, you were talking about how you had the wet diarrhea in your, your girlfriend's car because you ate the bad Korean food. Yeah. Well, you weren't talking about that. Your girlfriend My girlfriend was. said it. That's something yeah. that I would reveal on my own. I would not ever say that. <laughs> you it's not said, yeah. done that. How do, you, how do you tell your girlfriend stories like the one you just told us? What like, do you mean? Like, is she cool with whatever? Do you have to word it in such a way? No. She's just like, oh, it's a fun experience. Well, I, you think I, it's I, funny? I don't believe in lying. No, but to there, anyone. But there are like <laughs> individuals who wouldn't find that story well, I don't funny. Date, well, then I don't date them. Good. You know, Good. I just yeah. I mean, you have to be picky in that way because it's like I'm not going to like hide things from my partner. Does Kalila find that story to be a funny story? Yeah, it she, is a funny story. She cried laughing. She did. Yeah, mm. that's such. You found a, but a great way I woman. I told it. Tell it is funny. You know? Yeah. 
Not that I, you know, I'm, you know what I'm saying. I know exactly what you're saying. You're a great storyteller. If he was like a regular guy, then he was just like, yeah, I went over there and that happened. <laughs> right. But yeah. you, on the other hand, well, that's you're a comedian. Yeah. You but know? I found it even th through the fear and the scariness of it. Yes. In the back of your head, you think, this is so weird and funny. And mm. funny. Yes. Like, you know, this is one of these experiences. Even when you think you're going to die, which mm -hmm. I've been in those situations where I think I'm going to die right now, is funny. Like, when have you been in a situation where you thought you were going to die? Anyway, you know. Well, when? It, no, no, no. I'm not going to tell you when. Well, then why did you say that? Because I don't believe that that's true. Well, then don't believe it. Because, I, I, like I said, I don't lie, so it's like... But why would you say that and then not want to follow because it up? Because I don't want to follow it up because it's something that I don't want to reveal to you. Ugh. But it's not that I'm lying. I don't want to reveal that to you. Well, when did it happen? I don't want to tell you that either. Why? Because I just said I don't want to tell you. But why not? Why don't you want to tell me? Next caller. Yeah, nigga. <laughs> Johnny in Virginia. Sam fucking Roberts. What's up, buddy? How you doing, pal? <laughs> I'm doing fine, man. I love it when Bobby leaves there. Uh, well, yeah, I'm me too, but usually back. he's like, he's not so like, oh, I'm not going to tell you. Uh. Well, you just got to pry a little bit and it'll eventually get but out. But I don't want to have to do that. I feel like I want to I want to make sure that the relationship that I have with Bobby Lee is solid enough that we can confide in each other. Yeah. yeah you know? point, but you, point, but, but you, confiding with you on air is confiding with the world almost, and I'm not going to do that. People, nobody it's, listens to this show. Yeah, they do, It's man. not a popular show. Don't no, worry about it. You see the tweets, bro. Don't worry about it. Uh, let's go to John in Queens. Okay. Okay. What up? Yo, you know how Haitians and Jamaicans and African Americans don't get along? Good. All right, so check this out. Bobby. Yo. How is it that you're a Korean American yeah. playing a Chinese man in Little Tokyo on the league, motherfucker? Ooh. Yeah, but can I say something? Can I say this? Yes. Oh. What's your name? What's his name? His name's John. John. He lives in Queens. All right, John. When they call me and they go, hey, do you want to play a Chinese character with Down syndrome on the league? Right. <laughs> There's several things about that role that I don't want to do. Right. right? Play Down syndrome. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you, Bobby. Yellow pride, baby. Are okay. you yellow? Oh, absolutely. Crap. Yellow American, baby. Oh, oh, I didn't know. I thought you were African American. Oh, hey. what's up, dog? <laughs> <laughs> but so you're saying you get you get this call. You don't want to play Down syndrome. No, you don't I mean, to... it's not that I want to play it. It's just that, like, they wrote the part. What are you going to go? Oh, it's Chinese? Nah. Not for me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like, it's, there's such little roles for people. Yeah. Not little in terms of size, but just in terms of Is it few? quantity. Few. Few that you. Yeah, it's with mm. the. It's a. I love that. I love. I've never really seen the show, but I love everyone on it. They're all my friends. Mm. I saw you with Steve Rainazzi yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. these are my friends I've known for a very long time. There's a level, and the showrunner Jeff is somebody that was on Kirby Enthusiasm. That you know, I mean, I know, and I did the dictated. He kind of co-wrote that. Yeah. So it's like you know, it's a part of a family situation. So of course I'm going to do it, and and it's fun to do. So it's fun. I, I don't know why even I don't know why we're talking about it. Right a lot now. of times people want to start trouble, and there's just none there. You know, there's what I mean? no trouble there. No. Is, it, is it difficult to play Down syndrome? No, because no. Oh, okay. Because there's no such thing as an Asian guy with Down syndrome. <laughs> 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 and, if there, and if there were, right? Yeah. They'd be just as smart as the average white guy. Because <laughs> Asian people are so smart? Yeah. Let's go to Mark in Jersey. <laughs> oh, there is one. There's one on... on that's on that's my headshot from 94, dude. <laughs> <laughs> just looked up a Google image photo of an Asian boy with Down syndrome. How dare you? Uh, what's uh, up, Mark? I don't want to look at it. It scares me. Turn, turn it. But, uh, I just, um, you know, I do love when you're on the show. I was going to comment on your league episode, but you kind of said it all. It was awesome. Um, the story that you don't want to tell, I mean, you've been on the show long enough that history proves anything. You're going to tell the story, so why don't you just tell it? No, because I'll tell you why. Because the story that I don't want to tell mm -hmm. involves things that could incriminate me. Mm, well, can't you walk around and talk around no, that a little bit? No snitching. It's not incrimination. I'm not evil. I'm mm. not evil. Oh, and you don't want to be perceived as evil. Not even perception of evil. I just don't want to tell the fucking story. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Does the story make you seem evil? Is that the problem? This evil thing's been all this, like, the topic of the day. Well, that's not the thing. Is, is that I have 13 years sober. I don't, you know, you yes. know that, right? So mm. it's like, there are things that I did in my using days mm -hmm. That is that's just best kept between me and my sponsor. You don't want to embrace that because mm. it's like it puts you at a point in your life where you really don't want to be at. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's also it's like it's not something that worse than the other story, but the other stories happened when I was sober. Right, right. So that so you don't like getting story into, in yeah. Beirut happened when I was sober. So mm -hmm. I'm I was clear doing it. You yes. Know? 
But the other stories that are darker are stuff that I did when I was using, and I don't really want to talk about them. You don't like getting into stories no, in general think, when you were using. Yeah, no, I, I get told that. some. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Adrian, <laughs> stop showing me photos He's with the Asian guys with Down syndrome because it's scary, and I don't like it. It's a Down syndrome so, conductor. It doesn't matter. Turn it the other way, Adrian. Turn, I, didn't, okay, I, I didn't even know. I have to force. <laughs> Adrian, Adrian, <laughs> yeah. you can I mean, if you have to force him, you have to oh, yeah, force yeah, yeah, yeah. him. I didn't even, I didn't even know they had Down syndrome like conductors, like Asian. No, we're very syndrome. talented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that. he's talking about. Yeah. The Asian Down yeah. syndrome even people. With, yeah, and even an Asian guy with Down syndrome can conduct an uh, opera. Yeah, yeah, an opera. Yeah, yeah. They Holy can compose shit. too. Rick in New York. Rick in Charlotte. That uh, yeah. Oh, North Carolina. I thought you said yeah, NY. Well, yeah, go for I'm, it, buddy. I'm from Queens, so that's all right. Um, so you guys talked about Thailand, and I had some amazing experiences there, too. But you didn't touch on the massage parlors. When you walk around Bangkok, there are these massage parlors with eight to ten girls outside. Mm -hmm. Literally one or two are trannies. Then some you walk by, and there's ten girls outside, and they're all trannies. Yeah, that's true. But that's I'll Thailand. You, guys, you walk the streets at night in Bangkok, and 80% of the girls... Our trannies, I found it to be very intimidating. I was more no. attracted to the general girl walking down the street in Thailand going to her job than I was the street girl. But mm. you, guys, do you, you have any massage parlor experiences in Bangkok? You, yeah, I do. Oh, yeah. You go to a legitimate house. Like, there's a club, the place called Amsterdam. It's a mansion. That's the place you're talking about on the right. show next time. Yes. And um, there, it's like, it's you know, it's... You know, it's well lit. Right. They have signs on their body. Yeah. Some of them have our trannies. Yeah. But they're si like, they have buttons that say. It's like when you like when you like uh, staple a cow's ear with the yellow tag. Mm -hmm. So you know what it, what it, that it's your cow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like it's basically you can order off a menu. So it's like going to Morton Steakhouse and going, I want the steak, and then they give you chicken. They're not going to do that. No. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. But in on the streets, you know, you, if they say it's steak. You know, it could be anything. <laughs> anything. Yeah. It's probably dog. It could be dog, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, <laughs> for me, I like going to an established place, you know what I mean? Basically, I yelp it. Well, I got you. I like yelping it and <laughs> reading the reviews. I got you. And then going, oh, I got four and a half stars, and there's like a 3,000 review. So that's kind of mm. what Amsterdam, there's other places like that in Bangkok that are like, but you know what? Also, on top of it, I don't know when we're talking about this, I don't do these things anymore. Right, yeah. that's not your life anymore. I don't want to do it, you know what I mean? I want to be more with God. I really do. I want to get more spiritual. And those are like seedy behaviors, and and I want to be. I don't want to be an abomination. When you say with God, do you actually follow religion, or just mean universally? I want to have a, a more whole spirit. To me, when I say God, I don't mean in the Western version of it. I just mean like I just want to be in the spirit of like good behavior and not what up God, and being good to people, right. being good to people, <laughs> and being God. yeah, and upfront and honest, right, yeah. and being clear, you know, yeah. And I don't want to be. Um, a heathen. Do you really think you're going to have kids and get married? Yeah. That's such an exciting thing for you. Well, it, it hasn't happened yet, but I hope but, it But does. to know that that could be in the future now. I, 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 yeah, I'm getting old now, and yeah. it's like, you know, I, I just want to experience. I'll tell you what happened. Tell me. Is I hate animals. Yeah. Like, I, no, I mean, I used to, like, punch kittens in the face. That's like serial killer behavior. No, because I eat animals, right? Mm. Yes. So to me, in my head, is like, if I eat cows, yes. right? Then I should be able to eat a cat yeah. or a dog, because because it's like a like a, a, a cannibal going. I only eat Mexicans. Right. <laughs> no, why? I mean, why? Why? Well, because they're spicier. Well, whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want to be racist in that way. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you have to just punch cats. That's tor like you're well, not yeah, punching no, cats. No, because once you eat an animal, you just feel like oh, it's war. Mm. So I have a war with all animals. Oh, I see. Once you eat something, right, you're like, fuck you to it. Right, because I have to maintain my position at the top of the food chain. Yes, right. But because of my new girlfriend, she moved into my house with a kitten. Uh-oh. Right? And I love her. You do? Oh. You know, I, 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 I'll get emotional. I, I, I really do love this kitten so much. Crying you know, no, cry. I thought you meant the girl. No, no, no. I, no, I love the girl, but I love the kitten. Right. Like, what does the kitten I, say again? Like what? Nothing. What do you mean? Hello? What? No, last like, time you said you, the, there's a way you talk to the kitten and the kitten talks to you. I don't remember. You did a little meow sound. Meow. Like that? So maybe, yeah. not really. Like, like that? Not really. I don't know. Uh-uh. And then, what the fuck? three months ago, yeah. she came home with a fucking puppy. Oh, oh no! Yeah, a what? Rottweiler. Did you Not punch it in a, its fucking a nose? A pit bull. A pit bull. Did you punch it right in the mouth? No, we, we didn't. We named it P Pongo. Pongo the pit bull. Yeah, and we have Ming the cat. Mm -hmm. And my whole life in LA is dedicated to these animals. I go to the pet store, like the fancy shit in Beverly Hills. You like that? I, yeah, I get like gourmet food. 
right? I look at ingredients. I get them toys. I read books and I read. Just listen to me, Sam. I know it's not about fucking sex with prostitutes, but this is. I am listening to you. Okay, it's a real shit. And so I, I go home and I go. I love these animals, and it changed me. And you know the reason why is because I raised them, Mm -hmm. and they look at me like I'm a parent. Right. You're their master. Yeah, when I sleep, they cuddle up in my belly. Because they know, trust they, you. They trust me. And so now I'm ready for the next phase. So now I love animals, and now I'm ready for the next phase, which is children. Wow. Thank you so much. That's huge. And now Thank you're you also so getting some, some pizza. Some pizza. Thank you so much. Is that, cat, is that cat pizza? But I have to ask you, <laughs> yesterday when your girlfriend called Opie's show, mm. she said that there was puppy shit all over your house. Yeah. So if you're buying the puppy, like, all this expensive stuff, yeah. why don't you clean up its shit a little bit? That's her job. <laughs> That's not up to you. I don't touch that shit. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Does Does your cat look at you like this motherfucker ate a cat before? I never ate a cat before. Oh, I thought you said you ate a cat. No, no, I've never. But I would have. would. I would have if it was available to me. Well, listen. But not anymore because I love animals. Do you get angry when they say Asians eat cats and dogs? I mean, not when you say, uh, yeah, no, I see that. It's, um, you know, there's a thing called the Yulin Dog Eating Festival. Do you know that? No. Come Y-U-L-I-N Are Dog Eating Festival. It's once a year, uh-huh. right? And it is... I, I, I book tickets to go. Just a couple years ago, I wanted to go. Just to see Just to try any dog? Yeah. But you, you now, tasted some? No, I wanted to go. I didn't go. But oh. now I would protest against it. Good for you. Yeah. You're a changed dude. I'm a changed change, dude, yeah. Change when, how old are your kids going to be when you start telling them the sexual stories? Never. You won't ever tell them? No. Can I hang out with them? No. Never. I'll tell them. No. They won't even know what I do, really. You don't think so? No. I'll play them the tapes. Well, they're going to find it, so that's why it's like, you know... I it's should life. Go, I should go now, because it's like, why? It's life. Yeah. Well, listen, I'm going to let you have some food. You're going to stick around for a little bit longer. What time is it? It's, uh, it's only... Uh, 5 15. Yeah, it's 15 you get minutes after minutes the hour. Me. Okay, that's no problem. Here's what I'm going to do. Take a quick break, mm. and then I want to play for you, Bobby Lee. Last time you were in here... You uh, you tried to give some positive uh, affirmations about yourself, mm. and uh, in rap lyrics. I don't know if you even remember doing that. We produced a rap song for you. You did? Yeah, and I want you to hear your debut rap single, shit. which you haven't gotten to hear. I also, who kid? Mm. I want to talk to you about all the shit that Eminem got himself into over his uh, Lana oh, Del Rey lyrics. Okay, yeah. And we're gonna play a game to give away that video game that Roland was talking about, called Fake Fake Totally Fake. All that. Still to come with Bobby Lee and DJ Who Kid right here on Sam Roberts Show. Stay tuned. Sam Roberts Friday Show will be right back. Right back. Right back. Sam Roberts Friday Show is back. About all the women in the world right now. Bobby Lee is here. DJ Who Kid is here. I like this song. I can't believe you're playing this. This is this is the best album that's ever been made. Yeah. From the Blueprint, Jay Z's album, The Blueprint. Oh, uh, I don't know nothing. It's the best album that's ever <laughs> the been made. The last hip hop album I bought was Tribe Called Quest, um, Low End Theory. That's hot. See? But you know, classic guy. Bobby, like, I, and I've played this a couple times on the show already. You're ready for a hip hop debut. Do you know about this? No. Last time you came here, today you come in, you're much more happy. I like this, Bobby Lee. You're happy, you seem secure, you're, it's, we're having a great time. I had 13 hours of sleep, that's why. That's why. Last time you came in, you were very, very distraught. Tired. And I wanted to bring you up and mm. told you to say good things about yourself oh. uh, because I heard Drake doing it. Mm. And Drake always seems like he's in a good mood because he talks about how great he is. So uh, I have this. This is uh, Bobby Lee. This is your rap. Okay. Is just start saying things that are like make me feel positive. Watch out now. Yeah. I am short, but I'm powerful. <laughs> I look like I have diabetes. I look like I'm a Pikachu, but I'm not. I'm a human being with a spirit. My dick is small, and when it grows, it's still small. But still, I have a good personality. Yeah, yeah. For an Asian, I don't look as good as anybody else, anyone else, like John Cho and you know Daniel Day Kim. They're all better looking than me. Oh. 
So like there's that. your rap, Bobby wow. Lee. Oh, man. Bobby Lee's introduction. So we have to do a, move, a video now. That's yeah. cool, right? How yeah. do I get that? Will you give it to me? Do you want a copy of this? Yes. I'll, I'll send it to you. Do it. No, well, I'm not going to do it right now. I'm on the radio. Right, but afterwards. I'll afterwards, I will do it. Uh, That's a great one. You like that? Yeah. Uh, let's go to a couple calls real quick. Steve in Tampa. What's up, pal? That's Team Sam Roberts. How are you? How are you doing? I'm uh, doing good. I was wondering, since he had Hookit in there and uh, Bobby, especially now that he has a rap song, does Bobby Lee get an N-word card passed from uh, Hookit? Hell yeah. Congrats, Bobby Lee. You can use the N-word all you want. I'll now. never say it. You won't? Not even with an A? I'll say Negro. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's, okay. A, that's, how, that's, that's it. You're okay. My, you're my nigga, Bobby. Come you're on, my man. Negro. <laughs> Very good. You're Look my plantation this. Negro. <laughs> is that better? That's a little yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. It's a little, a little weird, but yeah. That's, that's cool. And when I say Negro, I mean like kind of how Michael Richards style. <laughs> <laughs> like hang you upside down with a pitchfork in your butt. Kind of Negro. <laughs> Mississippi. <laughs> Let's go to James in Philly. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. Hey. All right. I want to talk to you about the Amsterdam over in Asia. Bobby, you've been there before and dabbled with the clientele, right? Mm-hmm. So, Bobby. I don't know how you didn't know this. That place is notorious for being the top 1% clientele for people with sex change operations. It's all transvestites that are absolute tanks. <laughs> Do you believe that? Well, you know, hey. <laughs> Do you believe that or? Why is it so quiet? <laughs> Bobby's giving me the throat cut <laughs> signal. Like, we don't want to talk about that. But you were sober. But still. Uh, there, was there a little bit? I don't know. <laughs> don't know sure. I don't know what you're saying. I mean, it did look like a pussy, right? I mean, I, 100%. You saw a pussy. Is he still on the line? No, I hung, I hung up on him. I hung up on him. I right. hung up on him. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now. Yeah. All right? Because I don't want him on the show either. Not only that. Yeah. No. 100%. And look at me. From God's ears. Look okay. at that nigga. From my mouth, from God's ears. Yeah. And this is a man of God talking. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah. That, No. I did not fuck no transvestite or transsexual. No, no. I do not believe it to be true. Mm -hmm. All right, they they give you they take you take showers with them. Oh. Okay, so you see their genitals? Yes, mm. in the light. I don't do darkness. No, and you said that place was well lit. Well lit. Oh, right? yeah, did, oh yeah, you did say that. Trust me, mm. I look inside and I know what they look like. Mm -hmm. The ones that have been changed, like cut up and stuff. Cut yeah. up and stuff. Yeah, one hundred percent, El Natural women. Okay. Yeah, give him a high clap for that. That's great. He ate that. Please. That's great. You know, I can't believe it. I was checking Twitter comments during the break, and you can tweet the show and myself at not Sam, of course, DJ Who Kid at DJ Who Kid. But Bobby Lee does not, to me, yeah. and maybe Bobby doesn't care about this, but to me, Bobby just simply does not have enough Twitter followers. It's ridiculous. No, don't mm. do that. Don't do that. I want to say this. <laughs> no, 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 no. Can I say this? You know what? I don't tweet as much. That's what it is. Uh, but can I say this? Yeah. My thing says you have 68.2 thousand Twitter followers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You should have 70 at least today. Yeah, follow at no, Bobby. No, no, no I want them to. I don't need it. I know, but I want them to. Uh, I'll, I'll delete them. Don't delete them. They're fans <laughs> of you and they're fans I'll of the show. I'll block them. Call. Uh, uh, don't call. Tweet. And follow. But can you send me that rap song? I will. I really like it a lot. And maybe Bobby will tweet it out. At Bobby Lee Live. What is it? I'm going to follow him now. Follow Bobby Lee Live on Twitter. Because the fact that 68.2. Let's see how many Twitter followers he can get by the end of the show. I follow his uh, Instagram. My brother. Bobby uh, Lee Live. My brother. Can I promote my brother Steve? Yeah, sure. My brother's in a band called Monchi Hammer with um, Money Mark from the Beastie Boy. Wow. And he, and David Cho, the artist, is the drummer. Yeah, oh, wow. wow. It's really good. It's called M Monchi Hammer. Do you oh. think, is he better than you at rap? Because oh, you were he's, good. No. My brother's dope, dude. Better than that, what yeah. we just heard. my brother's a shit. Okay, so you're telling me your brother would not get jealous if he heard this. It just starts <laughs> saying things that, like, make me feel positive. Watch out now. Yeah. I am short, but I'm powerful. <laughs> Asian. I don't look as good as anybody else, anyone else, like John Cho and you know Daniel Day Kim. They're all better looking than me. Oh, that's so good. So you know, uh, Jay Z yeah. would be so mad at that. He would be mad. I think he's a force to be reckoned with. Speaking of rap, uh, Eminem is in trouble now. You hear about this, who kid? Yeah, like what from his you're, poses, do from you're his doing his mixtape, right? Yeah. Um, and when does this mixtape come out? Um, it's well. It's going to be like a mix I got to put together one of these weekends. And, okay. then, and then I'm going to just release the mix 
Just whenever. Whenever. That's crazy. Yeah. Are you working with him on it? We're working like closely together where we're choosing like certain songs that didn't make his album, which is coming out on the 24th. Have you City. spoken to him? Yeah. Have talk you talked? I was, I was talking to him all day yesterday. Now, I read on the internet mm -hmm. that his face looks completely like skeletal now. Is that true? Nah. One of the people, he was at some uh, award show or something. I don't know. He was at some public thing. And he was with, I think, Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre. Uh -huh. And everybody was getting on his fa on his case because his face looked like uh, all skinny and kind of drugged out. They said he looked crazy. Did, nah. did you recognize that at all? No. When I was with him, he looked normal. He's, a, right. he's a good dude. Eminem, have you met him? Yeah. I was in one of his videos. Which one? Um, We Made You. Did he treat you well? Yeah, I love him. He's a wow. nice guy. Wow. He looked normal to me. I, Dre, I, Dre, I know Dre, I met Dre that day. Dr. Dre? Days. I did two days, yeah. They didn't well, even then, know you had the rap talents that you have. They didn't know, but now they'll know. They will. <laughs> but I'm um, gonna just say this. Um, uh, just out, I'm gonna say it out there that these two guys, I don't know much about them, but mm -hmm. they were really respectful and so nice, mm -hmm. and I, I had the best two days of my life. That's amazing. Especially with all the days that you've obviously had, for those to be the best two days of your life is pretty incredible. Um, but this was uh, Eminem put out a, like a freestyle verse, uh -huh. and he got in a lot of trouble, which is ridiculous. But he's always getting in trouble from his verses. Well, let's listen to a little bit. Yeah. I just turned slaughterhouse to a quintet, began a trend set, murdered a friend's pet, made shit as ill as it can get, went in depth like a fucking vignette, and two bar skins wet, I'm already covered in sweat, and I wasn't even ready to come in yet. You see this? Wow. I mean, how can you let your ch he murdered his friend's pet? <laughs> okay, outrageous. The things that that man says have no place anywhere near any radio or computer or whatever. Right, Bobby? No. Murdered a friend's pet? That's hearsay. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's true. Yeah, I don't think it's true. I think he's spitting hard. Like, right. he's, he's just spitting out, like, you know, it's like you're writing a poem, but you're, like, subliminally, like... Like slam poetry. Yeah, it's like, About you know, murdering friends' pet. I'm just kidding. That wasn't really the lyric that everybody had a problem okay, with. Okay, okay. That, was, that, that wasn't really the lyric. I was like, okay. <laughs> We're not going yet, Bobby. Just because we're not talking about Bobby. Look, That's I'm, what I'm saying. No, but I'm incorporating you into a conversation. You no, know? no. He's mixing you in. I'm, I'm, you're... I'm just telling Adrian to get ready. All right, but you're okay, right? 100%. Okay, do you want to hear what Eminem's actually gotten in trouble for? Yeah, then I'm going to hear it. Okay. I'm a brand new being, like Grand Pooba's band. Happy as Anderson Cooper having a tuba crammed in his pooper with lubricant. Wait, that's two. <laughs> I can't. Since honesty is the best policy, I'll give it the old college try. Try to acknowledge my mistakes. Probably won't qualify as a gentleman and a scholar, but it's time that I swallow pride and say that I'm sorry. Woo. Sorry, I can't apologize. Oh. I think of all the times I compromised my bottom lines and thought of rhymes that sodomized your daughter's minds. Woo. What? Then I'm like, dollar signs. Uh, but I may mm. fight for gay rights, especially if they dyke. It's more of a knockout than Janae Rice. Play nice. Bitch, I'll punch Lana Del Rey right in the face twice like Ray Rice in broad daylight in plain sight of the elevator surveillance till the head is banged on the railing. Then celebrate with the Ravens. Never date an assailant who self-medicates with inhalants. I'd meditate, but I may need a better way to Woo! escape the aggression, rage, and the anger. It's going in. That's pretty crazy that Eminem can still do that. Yeah, yeah. That's really talented. Like, I was listening to that, and I was like, I was kind of rolling my eyes, because I was like, Eminem, like, we get it. Like, you mm -hmm. know, you're talking about, you did this to Chris Kirkpatrick, you did it to Moby, like... Mm -hmm. This isn't. This doesn't work anymore. Okay, like you're trying to outrage the public by saying something controversial. It's old. It's played out. The I didn't next get the Anderson Coop. What does that mean? Well, I was uh, the next article I read. People are outraged <laughs> that he said he was going to punch Lana Del Rey. Yeah, but the uh, thing, you know, but you know what the problem is? What? He, he's a battle rapper, and then there's a there's a battle rap scene. Mm -hmm. yeah. when, when, when when they're battling each other, they're saying like out, outrageous stuff. But people just don't understand that battle rap scene. I can't believe that after 15 years, people still fall into that sort yeah, of Eminem promotional trap where it's like, yeah, it he's saying stuff so you write a nasty article. It's hard to it's hard to control like your media output when there's 20 million people tune in. You can't you can't veer out who's smart, who's stupid. Right. Mm -hmm. You just gotta take it in. But but like Eminem has like been like. Is this, he was on TRL, mm -hmm. being like, oh, I said something controversial, so like all the parents will get upset, right? Mm -hmm. From 20 years ago. And he's still doing it now, and people haven't learned, like, okay, this you know, is... People don't ever learn that. Nothing. That's, that's human nature. They just want to get and mad. Get, yeah, and he gets... he He's the reason why he's at where he's at. is because he's a master of that shit. Because he, know, yeah, he knows that people are going to get all mad, uh, yeah. and then write articles but, and be yeah, outraged, but, uh, and people are going to find out about this album he's coming yeah, but, out But with. the thing that's crazy, like, knowing him, believe it or not, he's just spitting. And then he doesn't really, like, go into 
start trouble. He just, that's the way he raps. He doesn't sound like he gives. He's, he doesn't want to actually punch Lana Del Rey. Yeah, but but you know that, and we know that. He's just saying that, some angry shit. Mm-hmm. He's just spaz. It's called. It's called. It's, it's like he's spazzing. I, I don't know how to explain in the white world. Yeah, yeah. Okay, don't, you, well, don't you, point at me when you say white world. That's I'm, fucking fucked up. You're, you're white. Yeah, he not, came in here trying. What? To, you're a comedian. Oh no. No no what? I'm, <laughs> does that mean Kevin Hart is white? Yeah, of course. No, no. Can I just say this, man? Cat right. Williams is white. If there was a, oh, yeah. if nah, there was a race he's, war, he's not popular no more. <laughs> DJ, DJ Hooks. Yeah. DJ Hooks. He if there was a race it. war, yeah. right? What side do you think I'd be in? Uh, if you're a comedian and you're popular, you might be on the white side. Nah, dog. You gotta be on our side. Nah. That sounds you're, black. You're my Negro. Oh, okay. You did make that clear earlier. Yes. I, I made that very you. clear. I respect yeah. probably even more now. The other thing about this lyric is, listen to the beginning of it. I'm a brand new being, like Grand Poopa's band. Happy as Anderson Cooper having a tuba crammed in his pooper with lubricant. Wait. So, so like, everybody gets outraged that he says he's going to punch Lana Del Rey. Yeah. But Anderson Cooper is just sitting there going, he said I would like it if I had a tuba shoved up my ass. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, nobody yeah. cares. No. Everybody's because like. Because that's what he does. It's, right. it's probably. Called, it's probably, called, right. Yeah, you yeah. know, I, I think it's called wordplay. Like, I call it spazzing. Uh-huh. Like, when we hear him, like, go in, like, whatever he's saying is incredible in our world. Yeah. But in your world, it's, it's, it's supposed to be wordplay. Word play. Yeah. His, but, his butthole's probably so big that Candy Crowley could, like, sleep in there. It's <laughs> <laughs> a big woman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> how could he. How, how, how have we gotten to the point where it's like. We just pick what's offensive and what's not offensive. Like the fact that he said he might punch a female is like this thing that oh my god, everybody should boycott this mm-hmm, yeah. and just ignore the fact that he said that that news anchor who's gay needs to have a tuba shoved up his ass so he's happy. <laughs> <laughs> like that, like they are like these people who are in business to get offended, so they could type their little blogs and stuff. Yeah, are probably of the mindset of what Bobby Lee just said. No, yeah, Candy Crowley sleeps up there. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you know what's crazy? If, if he if he wasn't rapping and then it didn't cause trouble, then he's not Eminem. He's not doing his job. And exactly. when I first heard this, I was like, Eminem can't be trying the same stupid tricks. He's he not. Got. He's 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 definitely in another in another space in time. He's not the same crazy guy from before. Right. So he's more into the rap thing. Like you know, then he must be sitting there, just looking at the internet, going. They're still fucking doing the same thing. Yeah. Like, they're still doing this. I mean... What I, world are we living in that I, they are still... Yeah, but Mitzi... You know who Mitzi Shore is? Polly's mom? Polly's mom. Yeah, she, she is, yeah. like, started the comedy store and stuff. Yeah. And I used to drive her around in the 90s and stuff, mm-hmm. in, her, in her limo and stuff, mm-hmm. and I... She hated me, but... Um, Why'd she hate <laughs> you? She didn't hate me, but she was just... She, she, she created my career, pretty much. She made me a regular and stuff, but... Well, she must have loved but you. But she was, like, also very... It was, you, you were always scared driving her around, because okay. she was, like, grumpy, you know? Okay. But one day she goes, you know what makes a star? I go, what? She goes, you need half the public to love you and mm-hmm. half the public hate you at the same time. Huh. And I go, why? Because that's the way people talk about you. That's the truth. And so yeah. Eminem is just doing the old model of how to stay up there. Yeah, because I guess once it put your fucking phone on vibrate. Who can- <laughs> I know, the whole world is calling me. Like, and you're a popular that's dude. Weird. Ah. Yeah. Jesus. You're gonna go? Yeah, I have to go now. No, you have I have to a go. show at seven thirty. I have to go. You know? All right, go get it's in Adrian's Jersey. car. Uh, Bobby but, Lee. Thank live. you so much, not Sam and DJ Huku, and <laughs> yeah, I want to say goodbye to Ed, the fans out there, dog. <laughs> I want you to um, send me that um, rap song. Thank you, Bobby Lee. Live on Twitter, you can see him at Bananas and Hasbrook Heights, and we'll play him out with this. It's just start <laughs> saying things that are like make me feel positive. Watch out now. Yeah, I am. Short, but I'm powerful. I look like I have diabetes. I look like I'm a Pikachu, but I'm not. I'm a human being with a spirit. My dick is small, and when it grows, it's still small. But still, I have a good personality. Yeah, yeah. For an Asian, I don't look as good as anybody else, anyone else, like John Cho and you know Daniel Day Kim. They're all better looking than me. Oh. Oh my God, Bobby Lee. Is among my favorite people. Yeah, he's the coolest motherfucker. So much fucking fun. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Carrie in New Jersey. What's up, Carrie? Yo, Sam. It's Carrie with the team, man. How you doing? How you doing? I'm good. What up? Great days. Two great days with Bobby Lee. Yeah, man. Big respect. You guys are great guests, man. Everything's great. But you know, you were talking about Eminem. Eminem was the uh, finale at the concert for Valor Tuesday. Mm -hmm. He looked like a million bucks. 
Yeah. He played like a million bucks. He's not skeletal, Sam. See, people are like, they just, uh, yeah, because I didn't know. I was legitimately asking you because yeah, you've been. I was hanging with him. The media is just exaggerating stuff. They just reason. love yeah. a reason to throw someone under mm. the bus. They just love it. Well, who kid? Uh, like Roland said, we got a couple of games to give away. Oh shit! And uh, I have a new. I have. We have a Call of Duty Advanced Warfare for PlayStation Four to give away. Mm. And I have a game that I want to play. I want you in studio for this. Get you ready? Out of here. Go ahead. Which one is real and which one is fake? It's fake, fake, totally fake. Yeah, it's time to play. <laughs> who can fake, fake, totally fake? Oh, it's a no. game. What is this? <laughs> that is taking over the country right now. This is how the game works. We play three internet videos that have been popular this week. One mm. is a confirmed fake. You, the audience, have to tell me which one. Is it confirmed fake? And maybe, just maybe, you'll be able to walk out of here with a brand new copy of Call of Duty Advanced Warfare for PlayStation 4. Of course, only here on Fake Fake. Totally fake. <laughs> <laughs> which one is real and which one is fake? It's fake, fake, totally fake. <laughs> All right, who kid? Are you ready to are you ready to play this game? Yeah. This is going to be huge. Hell it's taking yeah. over everything. What? Um one video. Mm. And I'm telling you, there are three videos I'm going to play for you. I'm going to play a little clip of each one. One, I can confirm is fake. Okay. Fake, totally fake. All right. The other two are looks like they're real right now. One definitely fake, fake, totally fake. And there's three. There's three videos. You have to tell me which one. It's fake, fake, totally fake. We're going to start, of course, we were talking about it last week. You've seen the video of the woman being catcalled, right, in New mm -hmm. York City? Yeah. Well, uh, a woman, uh, a, a group, decided to do a, a project, a social experiment, if you will. One girl acted drunk. <laughs> okay. She went out on the street to see how guys would react to her, a la the catcalling video. Let's listen to a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. Hi! Hey. How are you? What's your name? I'm, I'm Jennifer. I'm trying to find a bus to Culver City. A bus? You don't need to take a bus. Come on. We no, but I need to find the. I, no, no, is no, no, it? No, no, I think no, no, it's no, no, that no, way. No, no, no. No, Culver no, City. No, go Can else. you help me? We're gonna go somewhere else. Where are we gonna go? To my house. Wait, but but that's not. Uh, there's a bus line there. Oh, so that's. <laughs> what a sucker. <laughs> video number one, and it really <laughs> gives you no faith. In humanity whatsoever. I mean, no help, huh? I mean, no help. Every guy <laughs> on that street is trying to sexually assault this poor woman. It's disgusting. This world. I it think. is. It really does. It makes you look at the world like I can't even exist here. You honestly help her if she was drunk, came up to you, and she looked like easy pussy. I wouldn't try to get her back to my house. You and, even no. if she looks incredibly hot. No, who kid? I'm a good person. Uh, what would you do? I would fuck the shit out of her. No, who kid? <laughs> terrible. You're a terrible, terrible person. She's drunk. Uh, all she's right. White. Uh, yeah, I, she was white. You could tell that in the voice, but couldn't you? I'm not a drug white girl get out of my fucking shit. You won't. Dude. Well, I've done you. Every brother uh, that she ran into was uh, feeling uh, the same way that you were. I'm telling you. Just terrible. Well, let's move on. Fake, fake, totally fake. One of these three is fake. We move on to... Uh, um, it, this was a church. Have you ever been to these churches where, like, you've seen them on TV where they try to get a guy out of a wheelchair. He starts walking. Uh, like those... Bap those uh, they're like... Screaming and yelling, yeah, like, yeah. like he's seen the light. He's walking. Yeah. He's walking. But it's all a setup. Though. Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, new video came out of a church like that, but they got the gay out of a guy. What? A kid says he's gay. He walks Whoa. into church. The Lord touches him down, and he goes on this ring. You want to hear audio from the church? Go ahead, please. All right, let me play this here on Fake, Fake, Totally Fake. What? Do you believe that the Lord tonight has set you free? <laughs> yes, sir. Turn around and tell those people. Tell them. I'm not gay no more. I am delivered. I don't like men no more. I said I like women. Women, 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 women. He likes women who can. He obviously was black. He said I don't like men's anymore. He said he don't like men's no more. <laughs> this is at a church. He is being delivered. Oh, fucking real. You're on fake, fake, totally fake. I mean, it was, and it's crazy. There's a I whole audience fake, around man. him. I gotta be fake. I don't know, man. There's a whole audience around him <laughs> going like, he has seen the light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know why they do that? Because when they pass the basket around, they think it's like a real healing thing. Right. They put the money up. Right. And then the priest leaves in the bins. Now, the question is not 
is that person acting for the sake of his church? The question is, is mm. the video itself real or fake? Fake, fake, totally fake. Yeah. That's what we're trying to figure out right now. One of these three, the last one, who kid, <laughs> I brought in for you. Go ahead. This is reportedly from a newscast, mm. and it happened right after the San Francisco Giants won the World Series. Oh, wow. Oh, and yeah. a small child grabs the microphone. Is yeah. it fake, fake, totally fake? We'll find out. What do you guys think? You, you okay with a little rain? Yes. Yeah, so we're excited. All right. Are you, with who are you waiting to see? Who's who's the one person? I see a lot of panda hats everywhere I go. Is he is he the guy you want to see? No, we want to see oh, Joe Panda. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's your shit, who kid? I was saving it for you. What did he say? He was the Joe Panda. He said, "Fuck her right in the pussy." Yeah, fuck her right in the pussy. <laughs> So what do you think? What do you, what do you think? Now is that little kid? Well, there's only one thing to do, and that's to play the game. Yeah. Which one is real and which one is fake? It's fake, fake, totally fake. <laughs> Jason in Montana, which one of those three videos is fake, fake, totally fake? I would say number three, Sam, prime time, Robert. Wow. You're voting number three, which was, uh, that was the kid who said fucker right in the pussy. If you remember, mm -hmm. DJ Who Kid, you thought the original fucker right in the pussy guy was real. I personally believe that that was a real video. Now, I've seen it over and over. It looks fake now. But. It look, now it does. All right, Jason, yeah. I'm going to put you on hold. Jason, uh, on line two, you think video three. Okay, I'm going to put you on hold. Who Kid, do you All have right. any do you have any ideas? Uh, I think the men's thing, the number two. You think number two? The gay guy, the black gay guy. Uh, once, right. you're, once you're black and gay, you're, you're gay for life. <laughs> Can't get it out. Let me go to Mike in Jersey. Mike, do you have a guess? Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to guess. It's the first video. It's fake, fake, totally fake. The drunk girl trying to trying to uh, get home. You think that one was fake, fake, totally fake? Yeah, because Bobby Lee already said half the black guys are gay, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. That's good rationale. I'm going to put you on hold, buddy. I just learned about that today, too. Shit. Let me go to. Uh, Fucking gay. One more. John in Jersey, what do you think? Number two, Sam. You think it's number two? You think that's what uh, Who Kid thinks as well? Mm. Well, I'm going to tell you, John in Jersey, why don't I. Here, this is the way the game is played. You know what the game is. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, what's the title of the game? Fake, fake, totally fake. Which one is real? And which one is fake? It's fake, fake, totally fake. Unbelievable. All right, are we ready to hear which one was the fake video? Are you are you holding tight, John? I I'm about to shit myself. Okay, good, good. That is the environment that we have here on fake, fake, totally fake. Let's listen to the fake video right now. You ready? I'm ready. Hi! Oh. How are you? I am sorry. I am Fuck sorry, John. Here. Are you serious? Because I want to say congratulations. Mike in Jersey, you are the big winner on Fake, Fake, Totally Fuck Fake. Get out of here, man. Are you serious? That, that was fake. Congratulations. Mike in Jersey, you thought this video of this girl walking around pretending to be drunk was Fake, Fake, Totally Fake. It was a complete setup. And you have won a copy of Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Congratulations, Mike in Jersey. That's crazy. Awesome, thanks. What are you going to do with your video game? Play it immediately. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You're going to get to play it immediately, uh, yeah. all because you were a part of Fake, Fake, Totally Fake. Which one is real and which one is fake? It's fake. Yeah. Why does that drop so fake? <laughs> so that's it. Fake, fake, totally fake. Uh, and uh, Jason in Montana? Yes. You were on hold for about an hour, right? Mm. Yes, sir. All right, I'm going to give you a copy of the game, too. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's a long time. Yeah, yeah. Prime time, Robert. Yeah. All right, hold on. Line one and line two, get copies of this game. I mean, who kid? How exciting was You're that? You're not really that evil if you gave that guy a video game. I'm not an evil an hour. guy. I'm not an evil guy. He was on hold for an hour, and he really wanted it. Do you want to hear some more of the... Uh, of the church. That church audio no, is that real. That church is hilarious. That cannot be serious. Play, uh, play that church one more time for me, please. As of right now, yeah. that's real audio from a church. I know you love that kid saying, fuck it right in the pussy. <laughs> I love it. You know what they're great? Let me play that real quick. Go ahead. Uh, that, this was right after the Giants won uh, <laughs> the World Series. What do you guys think? You, you okay with a little rain? Yes. Yeah. So we're excited. All right. Who, you, who are you waiting to see? Who's who's the one person? I see a lot of panda hats everywhere I go. Is he is he the guy you want to see? No, we want to see oh, Joe Panda. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Well, obviously some Giants fans aren't behaving themselves. We apologize for that. So great is that you can see this little kid is saying it. You can hear it's a little kid. But you can see if you watch the video, he's all excited. You can tell his dad's put him up to it. And you can see an adult arm kind of pushing him forward and pulling him away. So great. That's why when Bobby Lee has a kid, I hope that's how Bobby Lee raises his kid. <laughs> While we still have a minute, let me play for you. This is it was it's a, it's a real church. It appears to be real. No reports of it being fake. The uh, the drunk girl. What had happened was she went out on the street mm. and she told the guys that participated that she was doing a sketch, like oh. a skit, and the guys didn't realize that she was going to put it out as if it was real. Oh, so, it's all... so now you have a whole bunch of guys acting like rapists, oh, so it's... and they're fucked because so you can see fake, their faces fake. in the video. So she's fake, and an added with them is more fake. It's fake, fake, totally fake. Wow. That's why we play the game, but this is the uh, my favorite video of the week. This is the preacher, oh, and man. he's gotten the gay out of this one young man oh, who doesn't really? like men's no more. <laughs> Do you believe that the Lord tonight has set you free? Yes, sir. Turn around and tell those people. I'm not gay no more. I am delivered. I don't like men no more. I thought I like women. Women, 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 women. <laughs> He's talking in tongues because he don't like men's no more. Oh, my Lord. That's so embarrassed for us, man. Women, women, women. I hate I you, said man. women. I'm not gay. Stop it, man. I would not date a man. I would not. Tear up purse. I will not put on makeup. I will. I will love a woman. Now li listen to what y'all praise God with him. Let hold on, wait a minute. I didn't know gay guys all wore makeup and uh, carried purses. Carry <laughs> That's your church, who kid? That's a black church. I don't know, man. I've been an atheist for a long time. Women, 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 women! <laughs> and then he said, bruh, 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 bruh. I don't like men's no more. Uh, I'm not going to date a men's uh, man. no more. Bad. This is a bad point in uh, black history right here. I love women's. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. That's, I couldn't believe that that was like... Put down real, that purse and that makeup. I can't believe that was a real video. Stuff, Sam. It's a real church. That's crazy. Sam. I mean, it appears to be there's a congregation and everything. <laughs> you want to go to that church and check it out? I don't wear makeup. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. We should go there and get cleansed. You think so? You need it? Because, you know, Bobby Lee told me that, uh, you know, that I might have a percentage of gay me. Maybe I go over there and get it, get Just that get little 1% out. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well. <laughs> hey, Sam, it's Yep, it's Friday. I appreciate you all being here. Uh, yeah. Who kid? You're the man. Yeah, I love the show. Chris McCarble was great. You can watch the uh, Banksy HBO documentary Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Everybody check it out and tell them Sam Roberts sent you. Make sure you follow Bobby Lee live on Twitter. I am not Sam. And Travis, can I can I play the uh, uh, Utopia song out? You can do whatever you want. Thanks. That's why I like the you in that there. Canceled. That's why I like you. <laughs> Who kid? You missed it. I heard. We did a whole YouTube. I had Fifth Avenue Dave on the phone. No. I had Angry Rob in studio. I fucking hate you. That and I want to. I want to leave you yeah. today with the moving tribute, oh. the musical tribute. Wait till you hear this tribute that I gave uh, to Utopia. Uh, musically, it's a, just just so we can all remember oh. what a great time it was in all of our lives, and we'll That's see crazy. you uh, next week here on Sam. You're gonna be back next week. I'm here, motherfucker. Holy shit! TGI, you know what? We'll see you then. Here is uh, goodbye to Utopia, and we'll see you next week. Muskrat ass, get out of here, man. David, no, that's not yeah, acceptable. Don't say nothing come on, to me. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, guys, just chill. Y'all started dying here. Every time anybody asked me to help, I help. But the people been asked to, they kiss my ass. Hey. Let's not make an argument about this. We don't have to make an argument. I don't know. It's one thing to borrow, it's one thing to get for free. I've lived out to be 10 years. There ain't a damn thing here I don't know how to do. You know what I'm saying? It ain't right to let me be mistreated. We gave six bananas, you need to give six back. I realize we have to walk away. All right, we're
gonna get you guys two more bananas. No more yesterday. Not on the next one, I need now. Or make it up with an orange and an apple. My name is Dave Green, aka Fifth Ave Day, son of a prostitute. I never seen my dad not once in my life. Been a felon since I was 17. I want to show the world that ex-convicts and felons can make a change. This is going to be the fresh start I've been looking for ever since I got out of prison. Toilet, I think, is a necessity. Until we can do the humanoid composting bins. We're not doing that. We're going to have a toilet. We don't have to keep polluting the oceans and streams with our human waste. Forget I get bossed all the time. Like I'm a slave or something. You know what? They can't buy ass. You want to talk about eating vegetables going out of human waste. I'm not down with that. Yo, pastor, after I eat my meal, and I'm out. This democracy ain't much of a democracy around here. It's all telling everybody he can't do whatever else the way they want to. This democracy is against me. He's crazy. Maybe we can I'm not digging this. I'm sorry. I'm not digging it. Maybe it could last now I gotta make more choices. I'm not jacking that. Maybe if you just tell me the whole box or nothing. Oh my. Okay, God. Like, I'm not down with this clown chaotic man. I don't need nothing. I wear the same clothes every day. And you're hurting us. So put all my on the top end. We don't need two bowls. Get one of these bowls out of here now. This has been Sam Roberts Friday Show. Hear the whole thing anytime you want to on demand on SiriusXM.com slash on demand. Tune in every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern here. Sirius 206 XM 103.